Hello, Achus of Canessi, Stadium Principality, Arnoson, Oddi Dogma, and a brief Vinas. Our glass, Ilch in Penani, I mean, you know, perfect Argever rugby can whistle. Am I rugby Arbenig? Welcome once again to the Road to Principality series, supported by Go.Compare. We've got a, a special day of rugby ahead of us. Uh, we've had a lot of rugby already today, including the ethnically diverse schools, supported by uh, We Soda, the Inclusion Day, the Special ed Educational Needs, Military Veterans Hub, and uh, the next game coming up here is the Mixed Ability Rugby between Portalba Panthers and Colwyn Bay Stingrays. And uh, to cap off the day, we'll have uh, the international gay rugby teams, uh, which will be Cardiff Lions and Wrexham Rhinos. But let's concentrate on the mixed ability teams. Starting with Port Talbot Panthers wearing pink. We start with number 14, Dai Bambi Stevens. A few nicknames in the starting lineup here. 34, Jack Powells. 37, Mike Morris. 4, Adam Lewis. 40, Connor Baglow. 3, Nathan Pingu Jenkins. 38, Cameron Bradley. Wearing 22, Ryan Boom Davis. 9, John Tiz Tyrrell. 26, Lee Ward. 19, Adam Williams. 16, Steve Clyde Williams. Number 5, Ralph Chief Lewis. 27, Nathan Watkins. And number 10, Ben Landers. Are Lithion, the replacements. 36, Dylan Thomas. 8, Joel Oates. 1, Rob Bartle. 31, Paul Bevan. 6, Ryan Howells. 2, Mike Bevan. 24, Carl Powells. 18, Chris Ball. 41, Jonathan Steggles. 32, Mike Fincham. 21, Neil Keddy. 30, Josh Bowes. And 33, Chris Williams. And that's a healthy replacements bench. And we've been pre-warned there may be multiple changes at half-time. Aki uh, Vai Colwyn for Colwyn Bay, the Stingrays. The forwards include Rick Ballam, Callum Sherlock, Tim Hort in the front row. Sam Bays, Joseph Hughes, the second rowers. And the back row, Rhys Thomas, Dylan Williams, and Tino Williams wearing eight. Halfbacks, Darren Owen, Pat Roberts, nine and ten. Centre partnership of Dave Williams, Gareth Roberts, 12 and 13. Out wide. The boys with the pace, Ivan Tidir and Paul Roberts. And the safe fans at fullback, Callum Jones. And for the Stingrays, only two replacements on the bench. Josh Johnson and David McKee, winning 16 and 17. And uh, Griff McKee once again in the commentary box with myself, Owen Gwynedd. And we're fortunate enough to have Gwilym Lewis uh, from the Tlanetli Warriors appear in the box as well. Chris saw so Mike Willem. Good job. Thank you, board mate. Yeah, we're looking forward to this one for yourself. You were here playing last year. We won't uh, talk about your glittering career too much, but put into context the day for these teams uh, playing at this arena uh, in the mixed ability rugby. Yeah, obviously, this is a very special place. I remember this time last year, um, we talked about it earlier today, actually, how excited we were getting ready on the bus, the special jerseys coming up, raining that day, turning into the ground, changing the changing rooms. I just, you know, the, the sense of uh, occasion and building up to this, oh, it's fantastic. You know, proper memories for life. And uh, that's what those boys have got tonight. Yeah, uh, Griff McKee up here uh, again alongside me. Uh, uh, Griff, yourself, uh, we've had a couple of wonderful days of rugby and maybe the mixed ability rugby for myself and I'm not sure if you agree it's almost a purer sense of, of rugby and, and inclusion as well everybody of all abilities able to play on this fantastic field together absolutely and that's exactly what rugby is all about isn't it to get everyone involved everyone's got an equal opportunity to have that stage here today at the principality and it's a day for all these players to remember they'll certainly have this these pictures from today above the mantelpiece forever. Yeah, it will be certainly a day to remember, no matter the result between Port Albert Panthers and Colwyn Bay Stingray. As we see the Panthers wearing the red and pink strips on the left, 
with Colin Basting Rays in the blue and yellow shirts as we see the officiating party come out together as well. The referee Khalid Falve with Tristram Woods and Evan Jenkins making up the trio. And if we look at the team in pink, I'm sure Gwilym will talk about the socks here. A combination of pink and blue socks. And there's um, an order they have to wear the socks as well, Gwilym, or they're not starting or they get punished. Uh, yeah, anybody caught wearing the socks on the wrong legs. So we can see uh, pink left, blue right. If anybody spots anything different, send it in because they'll be in trouble afterwards. <laughs> yeah, get your cameras out to get the photos. A few socks around the ankles already. But it is the uh, Port Talbot Panthers to kick off, playing from left to right. With the boys from up north lining up on the right-hand side. And uh, as we go along, we'll try and explain some of the law variations that makes this game possible. And it's an early knock-on by Callum Sherlock. So uh, an opportunity for the Panthers to settle into this one. Early doors, and as you see... The whole point of this game is that everybody has an opportunity, be it those with physical and mental disability, and some of those on the field, Gwilym, as you may point out, you can see inside the shot, wearing bibs as well. Um, what do they mean? So every, each team has got its own sort of system with this. Um, so you can see with the Panthers, they've got the black shorts, and that probably means a, a touch or an easier tackle. And I'm guessing that's what the, the Stingrays are doing with the bibs. I can't see any other difference. So someone with those, we need to just be a little bit careful on the contact, measure a little bit, and that means that they can uh, play a full game then and, and get stuck in. Obviously, they're all prepared to take a knock, but um, yeah, it just means that everyone can take part. Yeah, so would that be discussed beforehand? They would be signalled who who's uh, wearing a bib or the black shorts just to make sure that everyone's on the same page. Yeah, that that that'll be the case usually. Um, yeah, just to check that both sides are, are aware of what's happening. And obviously, a lot of these teams play veterans and non-mixed ability sides. So they have to sort of, yeah, it's usual to have a little chat beforehand and uh, make sure everyone's safe. Is there a case of a rush of blood at times? <laughs> There's lots of rushes of the blood. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, it is rugby and it's, uh, and it's, you know, it's a hard physical game. So um, the Stingrays, off they go. Into midfield over the 10 metre line. Ball's well presented. I think it was Gareth Roberts with the, the good run. Sam Bays. Palms that on back backwards. Tino Williams. Oh, Tino the Taru. Down the middle. Ball's well recycled. David McGee wearing 17. Maybe a slight change to the uh, starting lineups with McGee originally placed uh, on the replacement bench. But the uh, Potawa Panthers steal possession. A couple of early firm hits coming in, and the Panthers streaking down the left hand side. Ball's quickly recycled. The big men, the big forwards rushing on. And not many but bigger than this chap. That's what they hands. call it, boom. <laughs> well recycled. Probe in the right-hand side. Not accepting the tackle, the step. And it's going to be the opening score of the game. Number 16 on his back, Steve. Clyde Williams. Yeah, great work from Williams. Oh, he's really enjoying himself at the Principality as well. That's exactly what we want to see in these games. We see the Ronaldo-esque Sue by Steve Clyde Williams and Ryan Boom Davis involved as well. Great scenes and a, and a good start for Port Talbot Panthers as well. And he doesn't take no for an answer, Steve Williams. I'm sure he's going to get fined for a double celebration, isn't he, Willem, at the end of that one? Shocking, shocking stuff. <laughs> no, it's a good finish. You know, Colwyn have had their moments there, isn't it? And Tito doing a similar job to Boom, eh? But, uh, yeah, it's a nice finish. You know, goes to a couple of guys, keeps going. Nice try. Yeah, well taken. Just a good strength by Clyde Williams, breaking two or three tackles uh, and gets the early score for the Panthers. Oh, ball's toppled over. So we'll have to quickly reset. Ben Landers drags that one wide of the face of the post. But that's uh, 
a good start to the contest, the Panthers. And we can see who their big ball carrier is going to be. And I should have guessed Boom was a nickname for a reason. Yeah, absolutely. The big carry from the big man. It was clear to see what his nickname was going to be. But this is that try again from Steve Clyde Williams. Stepping in cleverly away from the touchline as well. Using his intelligence there to keep the ball alive. And gets the first try of the match for the Panthers. And certainly we'll be hoping to see some more celebrations like we've just seen there. Let's have a look at Boom here. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Pass. <laughs> <laughs> he, he knew when to give the ball, didn't he? Well, the Panthers. And off again. Oh, here oh. he is. Oh, he's got a winger step. Oh, oh Jess Shepard in into touch. And it's a superstar by Boom Davis. And... Uh, William, you'll, you'll have known uh, or met some of these players a number of times over the years. Uh, yeah, Plenty of warriors would have played the Panthers. Yeah, and I've, I've tried tackling Boom. It's not, it's not easy. And he's used to playing here as well. He played for the Maoris here uh, when, against the Swansea Gladiators. Great player, loves his rugby. Apparently, he used to be really quiet when he started, but uh, played against him for Aber he played for Aberavon Green Stars against the Warriors a couple of weeks ago as well, and he was good for them. So, yeah, he's a real star of the game. In terms of the concept of the game we understand that it's, it's a game of mixed ability rugby it's open to everyone we, we, we play the game um, so that everyone can enjoy it but how do the teams find themselves in this competition it's only one mixed ability game here today but how have the Panthers and, and the Stingrays found themselves here so because there are too many sides now to have a sort of a, a round robin competition um, with the WRU picks out of a hat two teams for the showcase uh, so the Maori select team played the Gladiators then last year it was the Chiefs against the Warriors and Warriors won uh, and <laughs> there was an extra game uh, after the Barbarians game this year so the Newport uh, Dragons the Dragon All-Star sorry played against the Pembrokeshire Vikings and these are the last two to, to play so everyone's had a shot here yeah, and to, so, you know so step then, out there so then is it a case that everybody's uh, name gets back in the hat and there's an opportunity to be back here next year i believe so yeah 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 so be fingers crossed again lucky rabbit's feet for for <laughs> leaf clover all that stuff bribes to uh, dave roberts and darren k doing a wru <laughs> yeah anything we can do there. <laughs> pump down field by pat roberts mm. It's uh, unfortunately knocked on by the yellow and pink shirt. It's supposed to be a scrum for the Stingrays inside the Panthers 22. And it's uh, an early opportunity now then for the Stingrays to, to show their attacking capabilities. Yeah, early on in this game as well, we've seen Pat Roberts get the ball a couple of times into his hand. He's looked quite exciting in the 10 position for Colin Bay Stingrays and it's a good opportunity here just inside the 22 to launch a training ground move and Colin Bay Stingrays this is their first real opportunity to attack that Panthers back line yeah, Tino Williams with the ball at his laces McKee fires it out and that's a good angle by Dave Williams no stopping the inside centre perfect line and uh, we spoke about a, a preset move and that was exactly it, just hitting the angle. And it's uh, an equalising score for the Stingrays. Yeah, perfectly timed pass into the inside centre. Dave Williams and Pat Roberts spiding his time and putting Dave Williams in acres of space. And the Stingrays on level terms. Not quite a similar celebration from Dave Williams, but smiles nonetheless. Yeah, slightly more reserved. We, uh, we gave the mullets of the day reward, didn't we, for, for was it, what day is it today? It's yeah. Friday, isn't it? It, was, it was Wednesday. Well, it was Wednesday you were here with me, uh, Griff. Yeah. Um, maybe we'll have to nominate uh, a, celebra a celebration of the day award. Absolutely. So Darren Owen with the uh, conversion attempt here. Yeah? As you can see, he's got his uh, Menai Bridge uh, socks on because uh, Colwyn Bay uh, got a couple of uh, extra supplemented by some players from uh, Menai Bridge, Llewar de Bont, and uh, Newtown Dragons as well. I was going to say, if you know your rugby club socks, you've, uh, <laughs> you, you, you've made your rounds. <laughs> and here's the score. 
carried flat by Pat Roberts and Dave Williams exactly on the same wavelength. So uh, the, the scores with a misconversion, all square, Panthers five, Stingrays five. So, restart by the Pink and Blues. Bobbles into touch. And uh, the cheers in the background is for the Panthers replacements warming up for the touchline. And they're, they're milking the crowd already. And with the 14, I think, replacement for the Panthers, it's going to be a complete uh, different team in the, in the second period. Ball into the middle, flung out by McGee in 17. And down the middle, that's a good hit. Tina Williams in the break, carrying the ball in midfield. Slips backwards off McGee. Game goes on. Now the Stingrays looking to strike wide. Scorer Williams using his hands this time instead of his strength. Still alive. And that's some decent uh, Panthers defence. Yeah, big tackle from Portalbo Panthers there on Tina Williams. I think it was uh, Nathan Jenkins, a.k.a. Pingu. Any uh, knowledge on why Pingu? None at all, I'm afraid. <laughs> Pingu's my favourite cartoons, if I'm honest with you. Quality. Oh, it's knocked on. Yeah, so it's going to be uh, a Panthers scrum. We were speaking before the game, Gulliam, about the Llanelli uh, Warriors. You did sneak it in there, you did win here last year. If I remember, it was a, it was, it was a close game, it was a tough game. Um, but you celebrated a, a quarter of a century of, of games this year as well against Kevin Anthony, you mentioned. So it shows that there's a proud history in the club and a long history. Yeah, and it shows that these teams are sustainable, you know. They, we, they're all operating on volunteer basis, um, you know, not social services or anything. We see great things and they come and go, but these teams have got some longevity. Uh, Gladiators now in 31 or 32 years. Panthers with a pick off the base. Presented backwards, Stanley Clutterly. Scissors changing direction, nearly intercepted by Dave Williams. Knocked on. Penalty given. Yeah, went with it with one hand, didn't he, Griff? Maybe. You've got to go for the interception with two hands these days. Yeah, absolutely. But the ball was there to be claimed. For Dave Williams, couldn't quite get on the end of it there. However, Panthers penalty. Ben Landers has the ball in hands. He'll look to try and eat metres here with his kick. Khaled, the referee, uh, very experienced uh, doing mixed ability stuff. He played a few times for the Chiefs, played a bit of touch rugby, so he, he knows, he understands the concept. And uh, he'll know what the players are going through and how to deal with anything, which is really good because obviously it is a little bit different. Ball for the Panthers, slicing back towards his forwards. Ball's there, oh, trucking it up. Good yards made with the assistance of to number 24 on his back. Carl Powell's on the field. That's Carl supporting his son Jack there. Jack's partially sighted and is throwing into the line out as well. Good running by number 38, uh, Cameron Bradley. A battling run. 
But it's uh, an infringement there. Yeah, let's have a look at that run again, if we can, on the far side. Again, we think we saw last year as well, a couple of parents and, and children playing. Yeah, it's typical for the mixed ability rugby sides. Um, you know, it's a chance for the dads to get on because it's not quite so serious um, and, and the contact can be limited. Then, you know, it's a far, some of the older guys get involved, some of the veterans. So we see a lot of dads and sons and other family members. Here we go, boom. Dragged down this time by Darren Owen. To correct ourselves, Darren Owen winning 17. Here's Bumpy, first uh, Panther to play 100 games for the club. Well, that's a good start. Congratulations. 100 games, that is a, a milestone. Oh, that's good continuity. There's a sniff of a try. Well held. Panthers, a couple of metres short, a counter ruck. Pushed backwards. And a sharp blow of the whistle. Holding on the floor. So it's going to be a, a penalty to the Stingrays. But the Panthers showing their capability with the uh, ball in hand. Just wait to see what happens here first, then, then show it. <coughs> so it's a penalty to the Stingrays. I think it's the Pat Roberts, the fly half with the ball in hand. There is going to be a change for the Panthers. And the referee having a word. With Chris Williams with 33 in his back for, for the Panthers. Yeah, I think it was just a little bit of bit of a push on the floor by Dara Owen on Do show now. Chris Williams. So of course plenty of passion playing at the Principality. As you can expect for these two teams, a great opportunity to showcase their skills and showcase what their club is all about. Both sides want to win, don't they? It's, it's you know, much as this, uh, everybody included. The teams want to win, and they want they get a bit passionate about it. So, you know, it's good to see really. And in a tight game like this, it's going to happen a little bit. Cheers, Into the middle, oh, it's uh, tipped forward by Sam Bays. And here Panthers go. Cross field slightly with Cameron Bradley. There's no stopping the offload over the top. Looking for Boom. And the big man maybe not able to stoop low enough to get that one off his uh, bootlaces. But it's knocked on as if maybe a, a blue hand in there. So it's a scrum down to the Panthers. On the 22, 20 metres infield. I bet you never corrected them again. <laughs> so it's a, a Panthers feed. At the feet of number eight. Panthers looking to tack down the right-hand side, probing. Oh. And here they are, 16 on his back, streaking away, and it's a second score. For second celebration. Poor Talbot. And Steve Clyde Williams. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, another good Maisie run from Steve Williams through the middle this time. And he beats... Three or four defenders with ease once again. But just a poacher around the breakdown, straight under the posts. And he's enjoying playing here at the Principality today. And he's, uh, what, eyeing a hat-trick after only 20 minutes in. So it's Portalba 12, 
Stingrays five following that conversion. Yeah, it's going to be plenty of I think fluid substitutions made due in this game. Oh, there's a oh, boom again on the ball. Yes, yeah, smashing through the Stingray defence. Quick rush defence. Good play from the Stingrays. They're holding the ball well here, holding possession. And being controlled by the scrum half, Darren Owen. Yes. Yeah. Good work in the breakdown, getting the ball back, but met by a fierce tackle once again by Port Albert Panthers. And the Panthers have, well, it's fair to say, they've emptied the bench here. And they've got plenty of fresh legs eager to have their mark on the Panthers' score at the Principality. And great to see the coaching staff allowing everyone to have valuable minutes here at the Principality. Hi, John, did you hear that? That, that, that Port Albert Panthers team sheet so completely wrong, so, so we may have to kind of just go off uh, numbers, say numbers. Referee, he's having potentially a slight headache trying to count all the players on the pitch, similar to us, to be fair. That's Joe will come on as hooker there, giving the Panthers a bit of energy. Obviously, he's looking forward to his moment tonight. That's uh, Joel Oates. I think, he's the, uh, club, I think he's the club's uh, record try scorer as well. So it's waiting for a 15th man, I think. Patience here from both sides as the referee gets ready to get the game back up and running. So here's a feed and a, a ball for Boom Davis. Allows the back line to have their moment in the sun and it's a good start to move out wide. Streaking away, here come the Panthers. They're two scores to one ahead in terms of try count. And unfortunately for number 30, the ball slips out of his grasp. So the ball presented back to the Stingrays. Left the ball behind, didn't he? Nice, nice shapes here. Yeah. And then uh, you know, they get the they get the numbers out wide and then just yeah, forgets to take it with him. <laughs> yes. Colin Bay scrambling across. And this thing's number 13, Gareth Roberts doing some hard yards to cover those wide channels. Helping out Ivan Tedir on this left wing. Yeah, great to see both teams looking to throw the ball about as well, trying to get it out to the speedsters on the wing. Tino Williams, eight, Pat Roberts on the loop around. Gareth Roberts now then, he's in space. Ball on the pass just behind Paul Roberts on the wing. He don't want to give it to... Oh, here we go. Smashing run. Charging ahead, 32 on his back, ploughing forward. Oh, here he goes, Joe Lotz. Replete. 36. Down on our team, she does Dylan Thomas. It's turned over by Dave Williams. Yeah, Colin Bay, Stingrays, hanging on into this one. That's a good kick downfield, finding acres of space, the ball trickling towards that touchline. That's a super touch finder. 
Oh, well, is there a, a slight mistake by number 30? Was it a toe in touch? 30 down as Josh Bores on our team sheet. It's a lovely kick. It relieves a lot of pressure on the Stingrays. As you mentioned, the young man trying to control the bounce of the ball, couldn't quite make it there. Yeah, I think any international kicker would have been proud of that touch finder. Yeah, the loaner number eight does. He knows it, stepping in there, and that's a, yeah, there's some good yards there, isn't there. We're not going to have the stats for that. We're not going to have one of those nice little arrows showing us how far that was, are we? <laughs> that's a not, great kick. Not today, anyway. I'm sure maybe the club maybe uh, doing something on the way home. But it's uh, a Panthers line on the 10. So we'll see here, the Panthers, um, the Panthers uh, throw people up in the air and, and lift, but I think uh, with the Stingrays, they're not doing that. So they've obviously had a chat about that beforehand and, and worked out what they can manage to sort of try and make it as fair as possible. So how often would these, these teams probably train? I know maybe Clenachie Wards may be different and there may be variations from, from club to club, but how often would these guys tend to meet up? So the Panthers are very, very active. They do, they play... Uh, as much as anybody, they're training at least once a week and they also do a lot of um, touch rugby, a bit of walking rugby and stuff in the community. Uh, Colin Bay, not quite quite so much, I don't think, but they're certainly getting more regular and both teams have played uh, games recently, so they're both in good form. Yeah, the Stingrays win the possession in the line-out. Again, that centre partnership combining with Tino Williams and number eight in space in midfield. There's what a good number eight does. That's crossing the gain line. Good counter ruck by the Panthers, disrupting that flow of ball at the base of the ruck. So it's left to the pack of the Blue Boys. Oh, the pass just floating in front, in front of Pat Roberts to his frustration. Williams, oh, rips it away. Oh, fumbled forward. 18 on his back. Well, this is the carry. That's just the same as here. The 10 runs hard at the gap and then put someone on his shoulder. That's what brought him a try and it got him some good yardage there as well. He played for us in London Welsh. He was on that scrum from Street and he lives. I'm sure it's Joe got Joe something. Could be Joe something. He's on Street this scrum. Yeah, the few changes have been made for Colwyn Bay Stingrays. Number five at the back of the scrum, Joe Danks. Recently involved in the Streeter Scrum Series that was on S4C. Now having his chance to play 15 aside, not the new T1 um, style of rugby. So it'll be interesting to see how he goes today. So Dylan Evans onto the field wearing 15 instead of Callum Jones. Swap of shirts and swap of fullbacks. And it's a slight pause in play as the players rejig their position. And there he is. Dylan Evans coming to the field with the uh, scrum cap. I think that's uh, Dan. Oh, he's right, got three in the back. Dan Bean, for a uh, Mari player, Disco Dan, as he's known up in uh, up in Colwyn Bay. I played for Mari's here against Swansea Gladiators, so his second time out on the field. So it's a scrum. The Panthers waiting to feed. Ali Coles about to come onto the field for the Stingrays as well with Callum Sherlock about to be replaced, the hooker. So uh, the Panthers up towards the ten, uh, the halfway line, flipping it back inside. Good reckon by the Panthers to secure possession 
Oh, slightly knocked on, unfortunately, by Joel Oates. Play continues. Referee maybe sleeping slightly there. And Dummy straight down the channel of Pat Roberts, who is firm in his tackling. Oh, that's a good pick and go. Stingray slightly narrow in defence here. Oates looking to pick part of the, the defence. Coming to the right hand side, that's some good oh. defending by one of the three 15s on the field. <laughs> Take your pick if it's Callum Jones or Dylan Evans. It's a penalty on the field. And then there's a bit of knock in. in uh, that scenario, so let's hope there's not a, a nasty injury there. I did say at the start, all the players on there need to know that this is a game of rugby, and they, you know, you can see the contact and the physicality. Um, there's been some big hits on both sides, which is really good to see. Ah, just dusting himself off. Looks okay. Hopefully, he'll be fit to continue. Number 18. Or well, maybe not, unfortunately. He's just slightly shaken. Hopefully, that's it. Yeah, but as, as you mentioned, Gwil, earlier, it's, there's a game of rugby, it doesn't matter. You can try and protect the players all you can. It's just, it is a game of rugby. People are going to get injured. But at the end of the day, they're all probably grateful to be playing at the Principality. And hopefully their, their names will come out of the hat again next year to have another go here at the home of Welsh Rugby. That's a, a penalty taken. With Pat Roberts and Dave Williams combining in midfield. Before Sam Bays, Pat Roberts. Some good handling and there's some space here in the right chance for the Stingrays. Good job tackle on Tino Williams. Ball goes backwards. Number 19 down the right hand side into touch. Good defending by the Panthers. The door seen the jarred. Yeah, good handling from the uh, North Walians. That's uh, the tackle that stops the attack. Yeah, cheeky out the back door. Those ones. A nice handling from Colin Bay Stingrays. They'll they'll want to get back on Neville terms or for sure grab their second try of the game. The two well-matched teams, and they, you know, they're, they're both running hard, putting some hits in. Not really a lot to be choose between them, except for uh, some well-taken tries. I know Griff asked you this question before we came uh, on air with the stream, Gwil. Uh, women's rugby in the mixed ability, how does that work? Cause I know the Slenshley Warriors have re recently started a, a female section. Yeah, it's going well, and we're getting numbers there slowly. But uh, it's a lot to sort of... Um, it's, couple of barriers to break down there, the disabilities and women playing rugby. So it's going to work on exactly the same sort of basis. And uh, I know that uh, they've got a women's group in the All-Stars and they're looking at it with Swansea. They got it with the Vikings. So hopefully it won't be long. Oh, it goes boom again. Well, yeah, he's charged his battery, so off he goes to the races again. Only one way, boom knows, and that's down the middle. Panthers ahead by 12 points to five. And the Panthers, oh, they've found a hole in the defence. They've made the break. Yeah, we, we, it's the names that we need if the numbers are incorrect. Yeah, good, good turn over here, and they've gone quickly. There's Pat Roberts trying to pounce on the opportunity. But it looks as if Darren Owen's going to instruct his teammates to try and put it towards the corner, and it looks like a great kick. That's Jason Craig just come on for uh, a Stingrays coach, coach as well as player. Another big boy, I'm sure he'll be putting his uh, weight around to effect now. Yeah, that battle between Jason Craig and Ryan Boom Davis just a couple of moments ago. If we can see them go head to head again, it'd be quite interesting.
to Stingray's throw in the 22. A rare entrance into the Panthers quarter of the field. Pause there, slightly untidily. Nevertheless, it's uh, a Stingray's attack, and that's a wild pass out wide. It's tipped forward. The counter attack is on, and here he is. Steve Williams, the try scorer. Oh, pumping those legs. He's just a machine. He is the point of difference at the moment. And the Panthers are lining up. Boom. Has he got the pace? No, he ships it on. One more pass. Oh. Unfortunately, maybe the pass slightly too high for number 21. But this is a counter attack of the highest quality. Yeah, a lung-busting run here from Steve Clyde Williams. Already got a brace for himself. He fancies showing us a third sue of the day. But then it's good intelligence from Port Talbot Panthers. Seeing the space, good use of hands, and this pass, the final pass, the all-important pass, doesn't quite come off. Yeah, and Boom Davis showing he's got some uh, handling ability to go with his carrying. And the Stingrays survived that onslaught. Front ball, well gathered. Opportunity to try and look for an exit. Number 11 is back, Ivan Tedir. Milgi. I'm guessing he's pretty quick then. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> well, there's a try score, Dave Williams. He's going to try and show his pace and go from depth. Oh. More of a ball carrier, high tackle. Stingray's having to work hard to uh, hold on to that possession. So back for the penalty. And the referee's whistle, not happy with something. We're going to have a word with the captains. Bit Cal of bickering, Willem. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's going to be in there. It's a tight game. Um, I think the Stingray's getting a little bit frustrated here. Um, but then a high tackle coming in from the other side. Carl would be very conscientious of uh, any sort of safety issues and that and wanting to keep it down. So, yeah, he's having a quick word with Tiz and Boom. Eh? Make sure he behave. Yeah, bring in the team. Have a word, boys. He'll be saying, look, boys, we're ahead. 12 points to five. Nothing silly now. Keep your tackles down. Yeah, and let's see how the half is only around a minute to go. In this first half, between Port Albert Panthers and Colin Bay Stingrays. Yeah, Panthers striking first with the Stingrays getting their own back. However, as we mentioned, Steve Williams has been the point of difference. Oh, hello. Oh, that, is, that is a wonder boot. Steve Williams keeping it alive, does well. Counter-attack by Panthers. And uh, all of a sudden, the Panthers, when they were facing a, a line out deep within their own half, are on the way. Boom! Ooh. Oh, it's getting tasty out there, boys. It's getting tasty. Good counter to King. Some would say good, some would say aggressive. The shackles are off, aren't they? They've said hello. Now they're really getting to know each other. Good tackle, going to cross field, Panthers have a bit of space, it's a carry and go. And the pass is there, an opportunity for Williams, back inside, good rugby, good interplay, good handling, one more pass potentially. And the Stingrays hanging on by a thread, by the skin of their teeth, the fence back out of position, numbers there, four metres, three metres. Panthers looking for their third. Huge defensive effort from Colin Bay Stingrays to get back in defence, to hold out Port Talbot Panthers when I thought they were absolutely certain to score. But it's clear that Port Talbot Panthers, that experience of playing with each other, they, they know where they're going to be, they know where to put the passes, and you can tell that their attack is potent when they're on form. It's a good period of rugby, with it? It's a great, great distance on the clearance kick. Almost only kept in by a lovely bit of play, eh? Great counter-attack coming back and some desperate defence from uh, the Stingrays at the end. Really good stuff. 
I missed exactly who the kicker was, but I'll be honest, I'm thinking he's one of the best kickers we've seen here at the Principality this week. Yeah, there's another team in playing here that's been struggling for length and their kicks, isn't there? You know, we, we could have done with that a bit. But yeah, it's good to see good to see some good skills out there and some aggression. Oh. Yeah, it's good to see that it's not quite boiling over. It's all played in good spirit. Important for the Panthers that uh, sorry for the Stingrays to hold out, you know. Almost at half time. They don't want to go another score behind. Let's see the passing here. Picked up off the floor. Good rucking. Ah, that's a, a beauty of a spin pass off the right. Nearly, nearly getting there, the Panthers. And the third score would have uh, really put the pressure on the Stingrays to, to fight back in the second half. Little bit of white line fever there, perhaps. Nor that it's happened to you, Gwil. Never, the stadium. never, never. Other end, I scored, but it was it was definitely my try to score. <laughs> How long did that take? <laughs> end of the first half. <laughs> oh, Stingrays are looking to run it from depth. Oh. Yeah, just a, a soft pass to even Tidder running out of space. Into touch, so it's going to be a Panthers throw. And I'm sure the Panthers now, with a, a period of sustained pressure, will be looking to... Get a third score on the board, open a two-score lead. I think it definitely helps the Panthers. They, they play so regularly, much more than Colwyn Bay have uh, recently, and I'm sure that, that is helping them in these sort of tight situations. And also having a healthy bench of, what they say, 14 players for the Panthers. Keeps the, the energy legs. levels up, doesn't it? <laughs> down the middle. So... It's going to be an attack right down the, the centre of the defence. There's no stopping of this man. Oh! Oh, TMO! TMO! Was it dropped? He knows. He, he knows, knows himself. Oh, despair. Cameron Bradley. Most of the Patalba Panthers have a nickname. Maybe Bradley have a nickname after this attempted try. Gets there. Just had to dot down. And somehow or other, maybe a bit of dampness on the ball. It slips out of his grasp. But uh, it's a, a two-try-to-one affair here at the Principality in the Mixed Ability Rugby match here in the Road to Principality series, supported by Go Doc Compare. Portalba Panthers 12, Colwyn Bay Stingrays 5. Portalba Stidag by Colwyn Pimp Arahaner. Emma and a Gavres road to Principality. A Ryle Hanner, Ara Ford, Wetir, Toriad, Bachema, Amr Hanner.
Rail Hanner are a for the man stadium principality and give her a rugby commisk me on Gashi a game rung team portal bots are by Colwyn Panthers um, are a blind or they like points I bimp and had been a sting raise at a Hanner that I guys can tell and thought uh, or on portal bus with my Steve Williams. Uh, Dave Williams, the scorer, Kaisi, Irkris, a glass, or Vai Colwyn, my dear brother, Hanar Kenta, Clown Adlonians, a wheel, a campaign, a Kayan, and Munha, a hybrid and damn shot. Irker Dori, Ithony, Baratoi, a cliff, Magretti, well, who we like a spread, Rukpi, and she well, that the Nadriani Galde. The Anino knows the Red Pit Pussy Cap. Am heavy work, am Jorge, a man in the principality of Huil, Jorge, get a friend here, Jorge, had a Cuban, Gore, well, my potential, a stadium Gore in a bead, Vashi, my brave Gweld, Pau Vashan and Munhai, Hin, and Jorge, get a queen, Harry Gwyneb, I can go to the Muya, or Vodema, and stadium of principality, Henoma. The referee just making sure before we restart this contest in the mixed ability rugby that the uh, bibs are worn by the players required to do so just to protect maybe some of the more vulnerable players uh, in the starting lineups. And it's uh, Colin Basting raised to kick off from left to right in the yellow and blue shirts. And that's a cannon of a boot. And the, the mishandling on the far side presenting an early opportunity for the Stingrays from North Wales to look for a, an equalising score. Yeah, another big punt again. Pat Roberts, Colin Bay Stingrays is 10. He's certainly been eating metres with that boot of his. Yeah, it could be a, a Pat the Punt Roberts nickname sticking here. Front ball and a big carry in the middle, yeah. Oh, have, you, have you called it? Have you seen it? <laughs> yeah, they've uh, got the big boys in there. Hughes, oh. And it's uh, Darno and throwing it out. It's uh, 18. That's a big collision in the heart of the Panthers' defence. Yeah, 20. Jason Craig, the manager, going through uh... Now it's on here for the Stingrays. They're looking to put some width on the ball. And some space out wide. Oh, and now then there's uh, Tino Williams. Williams has he got the pace? He's a battling runner. Oh, he's in there. Diving finish. Is he in touch? It's a touch tackle. Oh, it's a touch, touch tackle because because it's a winger is a touch player. Because the winger is wearing black shorts. Just to remind you of the variations. Only has to touch the player to complete the tackle. So that's a try saving tackle. Super play. Oh, ball's uh, just spilled forward. May start that one again. We'll have a replay on the disallowed try, the try saving tackle. Try scorer there. Nearly. Oh, big oh. hit on Gareth Roberts. Ball flies out on the base. Tino Williams. Just denied, looking to uh, have another pop, but it's stolen on the floor. Yeah, big turnover from Cameron Bradley, who was denied of a try at the end of the first half. He's certainly done the hard work here, but here's the try saving touch. Good work, scrambling across. Adam Williams, number 19, denies Tina Williams his moment here at the Principality. Yeah, again, it's happened again. Another touch, so they're going to come back for the tackle. And imagine, Gwilym, it's it's difficult sometimes for the ball carriers to know uh, if it's a touch tackle or if it's a full tackle. Yeah, and it varies between teams as well. So we don't we, we don't use touch tackles in the Warriors. But obviously, for Tino Lerry, you know, nine times out of ten, he's scoring that try. A one, one-handed touch as well. So it's, it's difficult for the refs, difficult for the players. But... But that, on the other side, Lattes, everyone's out there enjoying. So could it be the case that some teams will elect for a two, two-handed touch? Yeah, two-handed touch, or, or they would have had to have grabbed. or this, Yeah, so, yeah, different teams have had slightly different things there. But obviously, they've had the chat beforehand. And, uh, 
he obviously accepted it and there we are to try try saving tackle unfortunate for his yeah in terms of the contest they made it interesting if the stingrays scored next uh, there's a, a bit of an injury on the far side of the field yeah, i think it's jason craig who's currently injured for colin based stingrays big ball carrier and the big boy I certainly want to carry on here. He's back on his feet, having a slurp of water. I'm sure he'll be okay to carry on. But you can tell it's getting feisty out there. Both teams eager to win. Both teams making the most of this opportunity today. So as we scrum on the far side, about 10 metres in from the... Touchline, five, ten metres out of the 22. Stingrays will be looking to score next. They've had a good start for the second half, haven't they? They've been on the pressure now, which wasn't the case in the first half. So, yeah, I think a score would help the game. So, uncontested scrums, of course. Ball's there at the back, trying to work it backwards. Some sympathy, of course, with the uh, the laws of the game. Slightly miscommunicated in midfield. Seemingly gone backwards. No, says the referee. Uh, and as you mentioned earlier on, Gwilym, the referee having empathy with the game to to allow things to flow. Yeah, it's not often you see, you know, on the one hand, we've got these big hits and carries and counter-rucking coming in. And on the other hand, we've obviously got some guys who are learning, their, you know, feeding their way into the game. And, uh, and they're being helped around the field and things. So it, it really is mixed ability, but you know, that, that's what it's about, and the experience for everybody, and they're all, they're all getting something out of this. What I was just picking up on there as well, Gwilym, is so, um, both teams have 16 players on the field as such at the moment, but there's 15 playing. Could you sort of explain the rule of why, why there would be an extra, an extra person for both sides? So it... it, it Depends on the uh, the players involved, but uh, I know with Jack and Carl in the first half we saw them. Uh, Jack's partly sighted, so Carl uh, helps him round the field. Up oh, it is, oh. proper break. Panthers it away. away. Has he got the pace? Is a good chase. Is it going to be another try setting tackle? No. Into the corner. Smiles all round, and the Panthers get their third from a stingray mistake. And it's a, a bobbling pass, pounced upon by number two. Good pace. As the Colin Bay 15 tries to track him. Yeah, as we have it here, it's Mike Bevan who scored for Port Talbot Panthers. And he's getting the well-deserved round of applause from the fans. He's smiling, he's enjoying himself. It's a big try as well for the Panthers. Really extending their lead now, 12 points. A tough lead for Colin Bay Stingrays to try and reclaim. It's a full kick from out wide, it's a decent effort. Falls short for the right footer on the wrong side for a right footed kicker, of course. So the Panthers extend their lead early in this second half. Panthers 17, Colwyn Bay 5. That's a good finish. A winger's finish. Bay taking the time to come back upfield. They'll be uh, hoping to fight back into this one. It's been a, a tough old contest out there. No quarter asked or given. <coughs> Further changes potentially. Stingray Football. 13 there, uh, Dav Curry uh, manages the side and has played Masters Rugby League, so I expect him to see him taking some carries straight up the middle. Yeah, the Panthers 
on the tack again, but it's the Stingrays who need possession and a spark of ignition. There's a penalty in there. Is it a high tackle? And one of the Panthers boys have had a bit of a, a bump and a mischief. Or was it cramp? We'll have a look at the run once again. The Panthers may be one of the few strike runners that are too hot to handle at times for the Stingrays. And here's one of those carriers. Yeah, he's played really well during this game. The Panthers forward Cameron Bradley, big carrier, destructive. But he was met by Tino Williams, another big tackler in his own right. And he's felt the wrath of Tino there. And it looks like that might be the end of his day. Yeah. Pop the hamstring maybe on that run. He's had a good game, fair play. He's been one of the star players for the Panthers. Nice, nice see him later on. Get a bit of ice on that, on that leg. Oh, it's knocked on. And a penalty given. Yeah, rightly so. Good decision by the referee. And the Stingrays looking to waste no time. It's a big opportunity here to put the ball towards the corner. Inch perfect. And they'll have an opportunity in front of the whitewash and it's a perfect opportunity for Colwyn Bay Stingrays to get back into the game with that inch perfect kick but the delivery in this line out needs to be good to the front Panthers defensively under pressure for a rare time over the top, bouncing kindly for the Stingrays. Pumping his legs, Joe Hughes back on the field, stripped of the ball. It's another penalty, high tackle. He's going to go for the try, I'm sure. Pat Roberts plays quickly, goes himself, steps, weaves, scores. It's a try, it's a second for the Stingrays. The North Walians back in this one. You sense say maybe the Panthers had this game under control. The Stingrays not going to lie down and roll over in this wonderful arena. He's been putting people through, running hard and putting people off on his shoulder all game. So obviously that's perhaps what they were looking for there. He's just gone through himself. Yeah, he's been... A star player, he's, been, he's stood out today for the Stingrays and he's playing in a vital position as well in that 10 role, commanding his team and instructing them where to go next. But took matters into his own hands, crossing that white line. The conversion was good as well. Panthers 17, Stingrays 12. So we're back within. A one-score game. We'll look at the kick again. It's a drop goal. Caught is all by surprise. Taking that one quickly. Pat Roberts. Putting his side back in contention. And the Stingrays have found a bit of uh, impetus. Dragged forward, unfortunately, with Tino Williams in full flight. So it's going to be scrum down Panthers' ball. Be interesting to see how the Panthers react to conceding that score. It's going to go right down to the wire, this one. So many games have been decided by a, a one-score margin. We saw it yesterday in the Year 10 school final with Uskol Bro Marganug taking the spoils by 20 points to 18 against Harvard West. Uskol Pant victorious against... Bromer in the year nine competition. 
But today, it is the inclusion day. And we're concentrating on the mixed ability of rugby. And it's a chance for the Panthers to reply. And they've done so. Number 21, the scorer. And that is another score for the boys in blue and pink. It was a good defensive effort from the Stingrays to, to try and get back into position. But they created the space, good gas, drawing the man, delivering the ball out to the wing. And Darren Owen didn't quite have the pace to get back to stop Neil Keddy from crossing for the Panthers' fourth try of this evening. Yeah, and... Uh... Steve Williams asking, where's your celebration? I <laughs> uh, yeah. had a pre-prepared Cristiano Ronaldo special, tucked up the, the sleeve. But the kick is uh, about to be taken by number 26. Potentially Lee Ward here. Good strike of the ball, but it seems Lee is going to fall short. Got underneath it. So, after the Panther reduced the Stingrays lead to five, all of a sudden it's back up to ten. And this is the score. Well, work try, using the hands, using the space. And the rushing Stingrays defence unable to get across in time. It was a late switch, wasn't it? Uh, they, they switched around the side, uh, outside half come blind, and then I gave him the numbers and just enough room to squeeze in. It's going to be Pat Roberts. And that wand of a boot he has to restart the contest. Stingrays once again having to react and look for the next score. And that one's going to trickle dead. It's going to go all the way, and it's over. And maybe the first real mistake we've seen from Pat Roberts this evening. Yeah, he tried to put everything behind that one. Probably didn't catch it as he would have liked. Maybe slightly slice. Yeah, he didn't loft it as he probably would have wished. No, a a dry mistake from Pat Roberts and Panthers. We saw what they did last time from a scrum. Using the pace on the outsides. Let's see if that's the approach they go for again. Scrum getting organised. Making sure they've got the numbers. And the boys, who's getting into the row? Get your head in. Tiz is talking to a boom at the back here more than his back, so... Could be even for another big bulligan run here. Oh, well. Oh, it's left it. Maybe running out of uh, energy deep into this second half. Midway through the second half. Panthers, strong carries again. The boys from Port Albert. Okay, now we're seeing that uh, example of a play being shepherded on the field as Joel Oates carried that one forward. That's a decent tackle. Panthers held on the 10. The cross field kick pass. Testing. The Stingrays defence well taken. Oh, oh the offload. Now then, this is going to be a wonder try. Shipped on towards the corner. It's in. What a score. And once again, a second try. No try. <laughs> Oh, really? It's, it's disallowed. It is disallowed. The best try of the game has been chalked off. Oh, Boom has too much. I think yeah. Boom has too much time here, doesn't he? It's such a shame that this one couldn't have been a try. Out the back door. Boom then. One-handed carry. Lovely offload. Oh, that's harsh. 
Was it given for a forward pass? Oh, if I was a forward pass, it's harsh. We need a camera down on the side. <laughs> we'll say that the camera angle isn't the best just to um, help the referee out. <laughs> but, but it was a super, super effort by the Panthers. Thoughts with uh, Khaled, the referee, who's got to explain that to uh, Boom afterwards. Why he, didn't allow, why he didn't allow that one in? I wouldn't like to tell Boom I was wrong. <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't like to have a disagreement with Boom, would you? <laughs> Not at all. Yeah, the referee uh, maybe explaining a couple of things to the, the Colin Bay players, just making sure they're okay and, and happy to continue. We see, uh, and again, that's what it's about. Isn't it? We sort of some great rugby there, just unlucky with the final decision. And now we're seeing someone just taking a bit of time with him, making sure he's okay and comfortable before we get on with the game again. Yeah, I think he's okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's having a bit of a, a jig and a dance. I think he's ready to continue. Is that a stingray's hacker, perhaps? <laughs> so we're going to be scrummed down Stingray's ball for that disallowed Panthers try wonder try we can't call it a try because it wasn't a try the wonder no try yeah that would have definitely made a couple of show deals I reckon that would have been all over the poor Talbot Panthers' social media accounts however not to be oh that's a big carry Straight down and up the guts. Hits the deck, presents the ball. I think it was uh, maybe number nine with the tackle, Tiz. Try and look for some space out wide. Now then, here come the strike runners. Oh, it's tipped forward by number 15. Unfortunately. They, they were looking as though it got the space as well. It's a shame there. They're looking to attack from deep. Got the hands across there, made a bit of room, but then just... Uh. Yeah, and the, the Stingrays boxed in into this 22 now, presenting another chance for the Panthers. It is the... Uh, <laughs> go Dot compare. Road to Principality Series. The inclusion day here in Cardiff. And we may have seen the try of the series thus far being scratched off for a potential forward pass. We'll have a look at it afterwards. But the Panthers are searching for their fifth try. And here they come, releasing the back line. Oh, it's an amazing run. Oh, great pace, pins back his ears. And that's a certain score. That's not going to be disallowed. And that is a fifth Panthers try. And the victory going the way of the men from Port Albert. That's a cracking run. He had the try saving tackle at the other end. And now he's run right across the field, coast to coast, and scored a cracker. And there's a preset move, wasn't it? Bringing him off the uh, blind side wing. The Stingrays defence flying up. And that dog led presenting an opportunity for the top score. We've seen a try saving tackle. Now we've seen a score scoring streaking run. Yeah, it was great cast to get all the way around the outside. Dylan, Tom the Sorry. Dylan Thomas with the attempt at conversion here. Pandy always argues about who should have the kick. Not him. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't a bad effort, was it? Wasn't a bad effort. We've seen worse. We've seen worse. Yeah. <laughs> but the Panthers again here looks like they're gonna make a whole host of changes. Yeah, the whole bench is coming on. Again, it just swerves away from the first. Tackler and Gareth Roberts was just then a kipper for pace.
But once again, you know, Panthers, it's clear that they play together often. They know each other's strengths and give the ball to the speeds that we know what he can do. And maybe that's the difference between these two sides today. As you mentioned earlier, Gwilym Colin Bay Stingrays more on the rise at the moment in comparison to Port Talbot Panthers who are quite established as a team by now and it, it sort of shows today that they all are on the same wavelength to get over the try line Yeah, Alfred and Levi, their coaches have obviously done a good job and uh, we've seen a couple of step moves that have come off and we've just seen a side that sort of know where they play and, and are used to play, playing regularly together I think, been in the trenches and it's paying off today That's a better restart by Pat Roberts deep into the Panthers 22 where they're going to carry on from the Panthers and boom, somehow the big man stripped of possession Stingrays are not going to give up on this one good hands by Roberts going across field looking for help there's a bit of a bump in midfield and sensibly so the referee blows his whistle to make sure everybody's okay Uh, it's just a a bump looking like they're happy to continue and lucky again for the stingrays there that was looking really promising so is this going to be a tap restart looks like it yes a free kick restart that's a good carry by number 20 in the yellow headgear Roberts out again to number 15 who's been impressive since coming on Oh, slightly isolated, Roberts, too slow to get over the ball. A typical 10, not wanting to ruck. In the other sense, this contest is maybe, is starting to look like it's going to go the way of the Panthers. Stingrays finding it difficult to get back into this one. They played a good rugby to Stingray, it's just the odd sort of little mistake of let him down. And then, yeah, 10, 10 there for, uh, for the Panthers. He's really called the shots. You know, switch blind, open, kicked well. He's yeah, a couple more changes coming onto the field for the Stingrays. Looks like Rick Ballam is uh, leaving the field. Wearing one. The loose head done his job for the day. It'd also be quite nice to see Colin Bay Stingray sort of try, try to get the ball out to their speedsters on the wings. And, and we can see Chris Williams here wearing blue, former Premiership referee and uh, probably, I think, would have been uh, URC or Pro 14 assistant referee as well. Part of the Panthers setup. And always happy to pick up the whistle and uh, referee some mixed ability games as well fair play to him he's a really good referee oh he doesn't want another ball though Sir. ships it on straight away that's why he picked up the whistle that's a good uh, miss show and go Dylan Williams palmed off boom oh just a one-handed looping pass basketball rugby being played here that's a good touch tackle towards the blind side with Tis oh, knocked on the Panthers really ripping loose. It's their store words here, isn't it? Uh, Boom going lovely step here. Boom takes it up. Bumpy, uh, their 100 kappa takes, takes it on, then goes on a lovely little run, and then just a little knock on. And lucky, yeah, it's a cracking, it's a cracking bit of rugby to put together there. Oh, Boom in for a second occasion, and that's the knock on in there. Yes, pushing the pass. Yeah, the Ralph, offload was on. Ralph just knocking on. There's a nice offload. Just touch a little bit low, perhaps. Another let off for the Stingray. So, but they'll probably look to go again straight from here, I should think. Also great to see the supporters who've come here today to support both sides and how passionate they all are to see their own teams doing well at the big stage at the Principality. And it'd be mums and dads and family, you know, watching their, watching their uh, family, their sons and getting out there on this pitch is uh, something special for them as well. And both clubs have made a real uh, day of it. Uh, 
Another change for the Panthers. Number 26 having a bit of a bump. And according to our sources pitch side, Big Bob is coming on to the field of play. I'd imagine he could be another big ball carrier similar to Ryan Boom Davis. So the Stingrays from North Wales, deep in their own half. They need something to try and bring this game within arm's length. Ball's popped up in midfield. That's a big carry. Well, hit into Tiz Tyrrell. Now 20, a looping pass over the top for the speedsters out wide. Stepping in, tackles made. Gone backwards, play goes on. Is it going to open up for Pat Roberts? Steps in. Now then. Oh, oh it's a dummy. Need looking for support. Swerves inside. He knows he hasn't got the pace. He needs a bit of help. Popped up to Dylan Williams. Williams, a couple more passes. Up to the 22. Ooh. That's a high tackle. Referee says no play on. Number 20 involved again. Well, that's a good offload in the end. Wasn't sure where it was going to go. But finds a, a blue shirt. This is now David McGee in 17. Fired out. Roberts, oh. another missed pass. Looking for Williams. The open side flanker. Pops it away. Looking for a bit of support. Ball's on the deck. It's safe. It's in possession of the North Walians. Roberts tackled by that's Jack Prowse put a put a tackle in there. Another nice pass. Again, the Panthers defense starting to look stretched. Oh. Tino Williams. Williams all oh, swerves. Is he gonna go all the way? Oh, this is ah. it's another ah. touch tackle. It's another try disallowed for Tino Williams. Oh and he's denied by the same player for the Panthers again. Play goes on, tap taken. 20 hits the floor, looking to get rid of the ball. Out to Pat Roberts, it's going to be, no! It's a tackle, it's a tackle. Stingray's throwing the kitchen sink at this Panthers defence. It's oh. harsh, isn't it, you know? It, it, it's... Oh, it's, is it down, is it over? He's down, he's hit the floor. It's a score, I think it's a score. Yeah, arms up. And that's going to be a Stingray try. He's given it. So North Wales back in 10. Yeah, Stingray's deserved that. Attack after attack after attack. As they came forward. And in the end... Dav Curry with the score. Yeah, they deserve to get one there. Almost hard done by the... the touch tackle rule but they deserve the score and could we say they're back in the game well it, it's a ten it's a ten point game and with ten minutes to go a ten point margin the stingrays can they get a point a minute oh and that kick it's a pearl of a kick and a ten point game becomes an eight point game We've seen some big breaks. We wouldn't, you know, we've seen some sc uh, tries scored from range. So it, anything's on here. Yeah. yeah, beautiful kick. I'm sure. Taking notes from Neil Jenkins back in the day, Lee Halfpenny. Trying to work out what era he'd have been watching. Oh, I still love Neil Jenkins. Remember his line up with his hand just kind of. Floating in front of him, brilliant. But a pearl of a kick, nonetheless, from Pat Roberts. Yeah, dare we say there's a chance here for Colin Bay Stingrays. Eight points, but they need two scores. Time is running out ever so slowly. They'll need to score again. Quick fire scores will be the order of the day. Come across field. Looking to uh, pop it up, setting that rolling mall in midfield. 
And that's where we see the spirit of this game. The orange. Bib denoting that he can't put a big hit in. Oh, and he's through. He's going to go all the way. And now then, this is a streaking score. And a stingrays. A double fire score. Unbelievable rugby. The North Walians. Oh, with a sucker punch of a try. I've really caught the Panthers cold. What a moment for him. What a moment. Lovely long break all the way. We said he could score from distance and he's just made it there, didn't he? Oh, and he's going to take the conversion as well. 27, 24. The kick to come. Pat Roberts passing on some tips. The kick is about to come. As we see the finish, the Panthers unable to keep up. They're going to wait for the tee, I think, are they? Yeah. I think it's against etiquette to put a heel in this turf. Well, this is the finish. Yeah, great moment for the player and another chance to make some more memories. He's eyeing up the posts. Oh, just uh, unable to get underneath that one. But that super solo try brings it within a one-score game. 27 to the Panthers, 24 the Stingrays. And look at the pace. The tap tackles flying in. But they can't get a hold of those flashy yellow boots. As we hear the French horn, five minutes or so remaining. Yeah, and he's lifting the crowd up as well. Great scenes and a big opportunity for the Stingrays. Now they can they snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Down the field, up to the halfway line. And the whistle's gone. There's a tackle in there. Maybe a, a bib, a touch tackle. It's going to be a scrum through the Panthers. It's called a forward pass there, a bit unlucky. It's a lovely break by Dav Carrier. Nice hand on, and it looked like we were going to score again. So, scrum down Panthers ball. They've been caught on the hop a little bit here after having that 10 point lead. It's been reduced to three. Who's going to take this then, uh, Gwilym? Jack Pro's mate is uh, all lined up here with uh, Chris to support him. Yeah, is it going to be an eight yeah. nine move or eight pickup? Uh, oh, it's the W move. And Tears eight, with the pickup. It's eight, going nine. back inside. Nine, eight, oh, four. it's just dropped forward and lucky. Too much heat on the pass. The Moor's there. It's going backwards. Popped on. Now oh, then, it's the drive. It's through. Bulldozing round. The touch is in there. Oh, that's a big hit. Big hit from the try scorer. Oh, he's still going. It's not going to be stopped. Oh, it's going to be another score for the Panthers. Riding the tackles. Jack Pro's under the, under the sticks. Superb. That's his father helping him through a little bit there. Big hit came in and kept going, kept going. Jack could be absolutely chuffed for that. And uh, a super score for the Panthers. They may have been shaken by this Stingray's comeback. Yeah, there's Father Dad. Go on, boy, get on with it. There's a hint of an elbow from Dad there as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> old, old school parenting. <laughs> Big hits coming yeah. in. He just rides the tackles and then he bumps him off. And with the support of Chris Williams, unstoppable. A juggernaut of a run. There we are. Oh, conversion's good as well. Conversion is good. 34, the Panthers. 24, the Stingrays. That 10-point lead has been restored, and that is the final act of this mixed ability rugby contest. What an enjoyable game. Same as last year between the Warriors and Chiefs. We've been 
blessed by good rugby in the best of spirits and the true nature of rugby played here at the home of Welsh rugby but the Panthers too strong for the Stingrays the boys in pink from Port Albert 34 and the visitors from Colwyn Bay 24 and Gwilym a word about today it's great to see the spirit of the game and the fun, the enjoyment of the players on the field. Yeah, you could see all the way through that. Even even when the score was really close, you could see the players bantering and having a bit of a chat with each other. All played with a smile on their face. Anything that got a little bit, uh, anything that got a little bit tasty was soon put down again. All sorts of abilities on the field. Everyone sort of enjoying their moment now. They can reflect on they have played on this stage. Um, they would have scored, they'd have passed, they'd have tackled, and they'd be taking those memories home with them tonight. So, yeah, great, great day. You can see them all enjoying it. Coach Ed, uh, Alfred uh, making a rare appearance, chatting with Ralph. Players all congratulating each other. Fantastic. Yeah, I I take it. Mark Willem, now with Adam and Hin. Mark Well, the Chorea were man moon high. I think they didn't press it and hope you my my game, Gimenet, or Bossy, but at the rugby, or can I bring to good minds at a team? Uh, Rangulato, la Artima Arambartha Professional, Rainy Govio, man again, Cloud Glad, the Kalihuara, uh, Ak Kalihuara, Am Huil, uh, Mahini. At the Hingaki Gweld, and Glear at a Kai, Vinesman, a lucky, Horewer, Mikey, the Gala Kavla, Ihuara, and Statium, a Principality, Heavy Ma, Manun Cray, that's Govio Melis, Iachiatro, the Utilioid, Am a Blanado, the Dordak. You friend, you guide. What you want? Provide the honor. Er, Jorge, you're my head. You man, collect your lots. That I can get you well. Their emotion. Are we not better, Jorge? We're one. Man, great, you well. A man, man, brave, well, cover the bulb. I could have at his son. This is the silhouette by the Ervana. My dear, you're telling you, I'd have it. And I'm looking at when I come in, go. Or actually, you're the corporal. Medal, you'll have it. Are a kinder. I'm telling you, my dear, I'm not here, Jorge. We're my true, the draw, true, the draw. And the risk of the rugby and the hina, and we know that the Mayvun High Gwelder are a class of Benigma. And Horsol, I will ride in Uber and there I'm better. I think it's mod. Nobody got the lead boys, no, um, see what they were clue where they thought to be with me. Wari rugby to be with me. Nay, Horeon, the little bono valleys, the little care plans, a kind of plan. And nobody bought and dig on there. He got the new men that trail that they were rugby to where the Gwels that Moka Forum make a little board. He, uh, a new Gwels. A plant new, a tailing new, my mass are a kaima, a cal game vena, a joy or a top man and her golly power, my comined grieve young, get a toy team, a man is well. Yeah, I tell you, go, I said not have it, Calathean Ardi were the game, took a thy horror, a thy team of horror that a tickle lead in the scene. Arkham and a white Corlan near both with you, those. Yeah, the voyage of the fet, he needed a scene, and there was in Covio, a trial cap pow, we they all pow get you well, no, I well the camera. On to all my boys, sick boys, man, no more souvenirs, no more gray, but no really water, man, pow to kill it, uh, toward, yeah, a mean, no, to well the flags, no way that pop it, no really cali, need, I'm, I'm heady. So, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, Palchter, see hunt, can. The Panthers are still raising. Can you hear the portal bot? Ah, by Colwyn. In a game, are bending. Ma, ah, well, my friend, Carl, are are we going to do it? I'm too wild, too wild to go. Ma, I'm tired. Did. We're only going to eat sockian. On the match, I'm here. I heard my right team with the moon high. Both teams have really enjoyed their experience here at the Principality. But the winner by 34 points to 24 is Portal the Panthers. Victorious against Colwyn based Ingrays.
Nosweitha a Chroesonol, e Stadium of Principality, and a Road to Principality series a map. But you can Gan Go Dot Compare. Welcome back to the Principality. The Road to Principality is still going strong here in the capital, sponsored by Go Dot Compare. And the next game up here, we've got Cardiff Lions against Wrexham Rhinos, the IGR fixture here. So let's take a quick glance at how both teams line up for today's game, starting off with the Lions, the local side, Tim Pritchard, Owen Lewis and John Davis in the front row, the locks, Mark Jenkins and Jack Weston. And in the back row, Joel Hammer, the captain, Cal Pothkari and Yayan Stevens seeing off the pack. Nine and ten partnership, Dan Pullin and Rhys Craig. Howell James and Jacob Mills in the centres. Then Dan Cabezas, Gavin Wong and Scott Davis are the back three. Plenty of options off the bench. Stephen Van Hemmen, Nathan Marsh, Dave Mack, Sam Marsh, Iwan Hearn, Alex Prescott, Dan Ball, Connell Davis, Conrad Whale, and last is Liam Jenkins for Cardiff Lions. So the team who's travelled all the way down from Wrexham for this big game in the Principality. The front row consists of Kane Manton, Ethan Randalls and Elliot Munchall. Locks Mike Riley and Lex Guest. Flankers Andy Barker and Harry Cope. And then Tom Hankins will slot in to the number eight position. Stuart Valentine and Jack Harris will combine in the 9-10 position. Centres will be Tom Robinson and Liam Cockcroft. And then in the back three, Jonathan Asthead, Bailey Wellings and Gareth Blackwell. And the replacements today, Stevie Harris, Enrique De Lao, Gary Tiberius, Paul Davis, Callum Coleman, Dave Dixon, Owen Sinnott Davis, Gavin Prigmore, Chris Robinson, and last but not least, Anir Lloyd. So plenty of excitement here in the Principality for the last game of today's action. And joining me, we'll start off with you, Oz. Oz, excited for this game, the last one today. I'm sure we're going to have a good one. Well, yeah, it's been building up to this one all day, hasn't it? Cardiff Lions against Wrexham Rhinos. Um, it's a game of, of quality. It's going to be two of the best teams in Wales going head to head. Um, and it's good to see uh, the inclusion day um, representing all of rugby uh, as well. Yeah, absolutely. Joining us today from Cardiff Lions, John Harris. John, firstly, how are you and how excited are you for this game today? Very well, thank you. Uh, the rain stopped, the roof's open, but uh, we're going to have a great game. Uh, you've got a smashing suit on today, it must be said. Dress for the occasion. <laughs> Came straight from work, what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> but as, as we mentioned there, uh, it's, it's going to be a tight game. They've got, we've got two good teams here. And um, your side, Cardiff Lions, just tell us a little bit about the background of your team. Yeah, Cardiff Lions, uh, IGR team, uh, in inclusive rugby team, been going for 20 years now, celebrated our 20th uh, anniversary a couple of weeks ago, um, going from strength to strength. Yeah, and when did your uh, relationship with the, with the club start? I started playing 19 years ago with the Lions, just after they formed, uh, and had to retire through uh, old age uh, a couple of years ago, let's say. But as you mentioned, still a keen supporter of the club, still watching the games every year. And we've seen online champions back-to-back -back in, uh, in the IGR divisions. You've got a big reputation as a club. Oh, we, uh, we try our best, yeah. Uh, we've had a, a decent couple of seasons and, uh, and hoping to follow it up tonight. So how are the boys feeling ahead of this one? It's, uh, what, second time here in three years? So um, I'm not going to say second home, but it's nice to be back here again. Oh, absolutely, yeah, home from home for us. Uh, yeah, it's a fantastic stadium, and uh, I think the boys are really looking forward to uh, getting out there. Healthy bench, that's a sign of uh, of the occasion, maybe. Oh, absolutely, yeah. You uh, Sometimes on a on a wet Tuesday evening, you can't get 20 boys at training, but you can get 50-odd uh, who want to play tonight. Absolutely, everyone wants an opportunity to play here 
at the Principality, especially in a game such as this one, a Welsh derby as well. Um, just in terms of context of the game, have you ever played Wrexham before? Do you know what they're, what they're capable of? No, never had a, a full fixture against them before. I know Wrexham uh, have only been going uh, uh, a year or so, um, but looks like they've brought a healthy squad down tonight and look forward to seeing what they can do. And Owen, overall, it's been a great day again here at the Principality. The Road to Principality series is well and truly underway. Plenty of action and another game to cap it off today. Hopefully another exciting one following what we had just earlier in uh, the inclusive game before we had the Portalbo Panthers and Colin Bay Stingrays. Yeah, it was a good game, was it? It, it? it encompasses what rugby is about, the mixed ability uh, rugby teams. Uh, they're all in turn uh, over the, the three or four year history of the Road to Principality series, having their opportunity. That's one of the greatest stages of all in, in rugby. Um, and with the smiles of both sets of players and the end of the game, it, it really puts a smile on our faces as well to see them in, enjoying the game that we uh, all love up here as well. Now it's the turn of the Cardiff Lions and Wrexham Rhinos, and I think they're in that uh, historic tunnel. And uh, not having the pleasure to have played in this uh, park myself, I just can imagine that the nerves will be uh, jangling with both sets of players. Yeah, well, absolutely. Nerves jangling, both teams poised, ready to go to take to the stage at the Principality. What an honour it is for anyone to step onto this pitch. And tonight is the turn of Cardiff Lions and Wrexham Rhinos to go head to head. As we anticipate both sides to enter the fray, led out by Joel Hammer and Jack Harris for Wrexham Rhinos. And certainly, it will be feisty, it is a Welsh derby. And both sides will be eager to get a victory at the home of Welsh rugby in this tough match between the Lions and the Rhinos. The road to Principality, the IGR champions, Cardiff Lions, led out by their skipper, Joel Hammer. Facing Wrexham Rhinos, Jack Harris leading out the Rhinos. Both teams look happy to be here, but it'll be business once that whistle goes. Yeah, I can imagine they're all here to enjoy the occasion, but then again, they're all here to win a rugby game as well. It's going to be competitive out there. And Cardiff Lions, being a successful team, want to continue that uh, Winning form, if I'm correctly thinking, the Lions won here two years ago. Yes, that's right. We, uh, we were here two years ago. Uh, we've had a good couple of seasons and uh, want to continue that tonight. Just because uh, Joel, our captain's mum, will be listening to this, Karen, she will kill me if I don't correct you, is Joel Hamer, not Hammer. Hamer. No, that's his nickname, the Hammer. <laughs> <laughs> he I can wishes. imagine he's a big ball carrier. He's got a yeah, new nickname for today. However, both teams lined up. Ready to go at the Principality. Yeah, lining up, facing the supporters, the travelling supporters from Rex and Rhinos. As Cardiff Lions are ready to go here in the Welsh derby between Cardiff Lions and Wrexham Rhinos. An exciting game and the ball is about to be hoisted high into the Cardiff sky as we get set for this one. Official for this game, Griffad Madoc jones Idris Davis. And Neil Coney on the sides. Here we go then. As Cardiff Lions get us underway. And instantly a big carry from Tom Hankins. Yeah, Harry Cope for the second carry. Rhinos keeping it tight. Early doors. Not much width on this one. Nearly intercepted. Yeah, almost a fantastic read from Howell James. But it's a knock on. So, John, give us uh, some insight to the team. Cardiff Lions, who are the, the key players are going to pick up for us? Who are going to be the uh, 
the instrumental players in the team. Yeah, as you just mentioned, Hal there, uh, number 12 with the blue scrum cap, uh, very experienced player with us uh, a long, long time. Uh, you watch him cut up the centre. No pressure, how well? <laughs> First scrum. Valentine, poised, ready to feed into the fray. Kane Manton, Ethan Randalls, and Elliot Minchel for Wrexham Rhinos, but it's Cardiff who's coming forward. Smart play from the Rhinos, boot to ball from Tom Robinson, and they've made good metres there and relieved some pressure. Yeah, some big lads in the front row, there's it. Jono, who's a, a bit of a lump in the, in the front row, he's going to take some shifting for the Cardiff pack, uh, for the Wrexham pack. Yeah, looked a couple of big uh, front rows there. Uh, interesting to see how the scrums develop. Look, a couple of nicknames in there. Tango. Is that something you can tell us about? Uh, yes, if you remember the uh, the bald guy in the tango commercials from uh, a good few years ago now. <laughs> good pressure from Wrexham Rhinos. And a huge tackle from Harry Cope in that blue scrum cap. Yeah, the, the battle of the blue skull, skull caps, isn't it? But Hankin slips off the second attempt. Yes, Spacey had done the right foot. Cardiff, if they can use the ball. Ooh, big push. Yeah, big bounce on Andy Barker. As Cardiff Lions set, they look disciplined here. Mark Jenkins into contact as Dan Pullin is taking his time here. And a big carry from Owain Lewis. The ball has been spilled forward. There will be a feed into the scrum from the Wrexham Rhinos. But a big carry it was from Cardiff Lions. And we can tell this is going to be a physical battle. Yeah, probably the biggest carry so far in the match, is it? The captain, Hamer. Another scrum then for the Rhinos. And it's another big shove from Cardiff Lions. They've done well to secure the ball. It's the fly half. Launches it towards Tom Robinson. Ball is out. Challenge on the floor. The arm is out from the referee. Yeah, Hankins there again, the number eight foot. The Rhinos, he's making a mark early doors. The penalty. Was well, taken quickly. I'm sure there's a tap in there. There's a bold move from Stuart Valentine trying to run it in from there. Was that a pen? <laughs> <laughs> Downfield they go. Oh, oh, sloppy handling by Dan Cabezas. Disappointment for Cardiff Lions. But an opportunity for Wrexham Rhinos to get excited here. Just outside the 22. Yeah, that's for the original penalty. And the knock-on. Unfortunately here. John, what type of a supporter are you? First time up here in the commentary box. Uh, how's it feel to be up here watching the game? Yeah, it's a fantastic view. It's just uh, slightly too far from the bar for me. <laughs> <laughs> we can confirm John doesn't have a drink with him. It is a Diet Coke only. <laughs> Professional. <laughs> so Rhinos feed again under pressure in that pack. Yeah, the Cardiff Lions pack seem to be on top, but good control from the Rhinos to hold on to the ball. Nice flat pass intercepted from Cardiff Lions. Plenty of gas through the middle. Three versus one. Who's going to have the pace to go all the way? Scott Davis is still going, and Scott Davis. What a try for the fullback! And Cardiff Lions go from within their own 22 for the first score of the game. And Scott Davis, he's got wheels. Yeah, some good pace here. But I was certain one of those blue shirts were going to get there. Almost. They got in the way of each other. The top tackle trying to come in by Jack Harris. Slithers away. And Davis under the posts, and that's a, a nerve settler. 
Yeah, it's great for the boys to get uh, on the score sheet early. Uh, that's the furthest Scott has run in a long time without one of his hamstrings <laughs> going. <laughs> Didn't look like he was slowing down by the end. And he's got the responsibility of the tee as well. Does Scott Davis. He takes his time with the left boot, cultured and accurate. It is Cardiff Lions seven, Brexham Rhinos nil. Yeah, we see he does well, doesn't he? Pumps those legs, pins his ear back, and rides the first tackle, skips away. And I think it was it Andy Barker with the late diving challenge, just unable to get a, a handful of shirt. But that's the difference. Cardiff Lions making the most of the Rhinos' mistake. Oh, careful. Does well to leave that ball alone. Oh, the Lions oh. are off again. Big Bosch. And they're keeping their space out wide and right. There could be alarm bells in this Rhinos' defence again. Yeah, overload on this near side, breaking through the challenge. Jacob Mills still going. Mills going all the way. One huge tackle on the recovery, but the Lions are going to score anyway. And it's the danger man, as we pointed out earlier. Howell James crossing the line, but Jacob Mills with a hard work gives Howell James a tap-in. Oh, that's a, a busting run, isn't it? Great run, great run by Jacob Mills there. Uh, he used to play in the forwards, but with uh, acceleration and pace like that, you can see why he's uh, now playing outside centre. Well, he's had his wheat to mix this morning, hasn't he? And uh, in fairness, great support play by uh, Howell James to uh, take the try and the glory. <laughs> yeah, times is uh, run well. Flops over for a second score for the Lions. Yeah, it's a good time to get a score for your team in front of the cameras here at the Principality. I'm sure that one will be on his Instagram story or on his Facebook. We will never hear the end of it. <laughs> Davis ready to go again. To extend the Lions' lead. 14-0 it is. And Cardiff Lions have started on fire. Yeah, we can see why Cardiff are champs. They make the most of the space out wide. And so with bruising runners in uh, midfield, striking off tackles for fun. It could be a long old af afternoon or evening for Wrexham Rhinos if they can stick those tackles. Yeah, as you mentioned, Cardiff Lions' is physicality proving too much. Big carries from... Plenty of different Lions players, and they go again here. Yeah, then Stevens showing some good footwork. Trips himself up in the end. So number eight. Yeah, it was, does yeah, well. Yeah. yeah, Stevens it was who started off that move for the try as well. Beating to two defenders, swatting at them off the ball like they were nothing. Here he is again. Lovely footwork for number eight. I'm trying to peel around the outside. Randall, Randall's does well to shepherd him out. Yeah, it's going to be a lion's throw. Tell us, um, John, a bit about the, the league structure, how things work in, uh, uh, in the league, how Cardiff kind of doing this year, and then what the hopes... There's a game tomorrow as well, you were saying earlier. That's right, yeah. The, um, the IGR league is split into uh, regions, so we've got the north and the south. Obviously, Cardiff uh, are playing in the south, Wrexham in the north, so... We wouldn't meet each other unless uh, it was in the grand final. Um, we've got a game tomorrow against Reading Renegades, so uh, busy evening tonight, maybe a couple of beers and then an early <laughs> coach trip up the M4 tomorrow. Yeah, rehydrate. That's it, absolutely. And with a lot of these boys who are out here tonight, are they going to be likely to start again tomorrow? It's a, it's a big shift if you've got the same team out two days on the bounce. Yeah, absolutely. I 
think we'll um, we'll see how we do in the first half, and you might see some uh, changes off the bench uh, as the game goes on. Yeah, that's why we've got ten players on the bench. <laughs> Pretty much a, a second oh. team to come on. And again, Howell James down the middle. Yeah, running against the grain of the defence. The referee brings it back. Penalty to Cardiff Lions. So who do you, who would your rivals be then in the the South Conference? Uh, closest rivals are uh, Swansea, um, Swansea Vikings. We have got the uh, Bristol Bisons as well, who were quite close. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's a much more competitive league than it used to be. A lot of the teams have come on really well, so uh, there's some really good rugby being played. Yeah. So they, would they not only be geographical rivals and derbies, or would they be also competitive, pushing you on the field? Who, who are the kind of the, the usual challenges for you down down that conference? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, lost to the Bristol Bisons this year. They're a, a really good um, developed side now. They've got a good coaching structure. Um, Reading tomorrow will be a tough game. Uh, yeah, the the quality of the rugby is really improving across the league. And a big ask to go three years as champions as well. As we mentioned earlier, Cardiff Lions, IGR champions 2022 and 2023. How's it looking this year? couple of losses in the league this year. Um, we're still doing all right. I think we're going to have to wait and see uh, on other results to see whether we get through to the uh, the Southern final this year. Yeah, and Tom Hankin, once again, in the thick of it for the Rhinos. An impressive defensive display early on for the eight of the Blues. They need to uh, try and get something from here. Give themselves a boost of confidence in an attacking sense. It's a big shove from Cardiff Lions and the Rhinos struggle to get the ball out. Hankins does manage to grasp the ball in the end. It's a slow ball from the Rhinos. Robinson with a carry as the Lions shepherd the Rhinos off the far touch line, but will come back for a penalty. High tackle. And the corner is the option for Tom Robinson. Yeah, not a bad nudge there into the 22. Or maybe the best way or the easiest way for the Rhinos to get into a, a good attacking position. Maybe losing the physical contest at the moment. Hankins does well to soak up that tackle and, and make a yard or two. Big chance for the Rhinos. They need to get a score from this move. It just about held on to it. Yeah, it wasn't as slick as the throws, was it? But somehow or other, it comes back on the, the blue side. Oh, big carry from Tom Robinson. He's going to crash over the line. Wrexham Rhinos are back in this one. And Tom Robinson strapping the Rhinos is hopes on his back and taking them over the line big score for Wrexham Rhinos he does ever so well unexpectedly so untidy ball in front back by Lex Guest was it a, a knock on but came out of nothing wasn't the best of passes either but Robinson hits the afterburners has the strength and drags Carl Pothkiri over with him His power too much. This nudge. Oh, just looks, under. Yeah, just short for Jack Harris. But we'll see that try once again. And there's Jacob Mills who squares up to Tom Robinson. And he might be disappointed with with that tackle. Yeah, I'm sure the kind of lines will be disappointed with the, with the standard of tackling. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, scrappy line out and. Uh, first phase ball and uh, they've done a great job of that and the Lions will be reminded that the Rhinos are not going to lie down in this competition Lions streaking out to a 14 point lead having it all their own way really in the first 10 minutes but the boys from Wrexham are well up for this one yeah, the Wrexham side 
fairly fresh team compared to Cardiff Lions only founded a couple of years ago compared to Cardiff Lions 20 years 20 20th anniversary this season what have the celebrations been like John Oh, fantastic uh, celebrations formed 20 years ago on St. David's Day, 1st of March. And uh, we had a great weekend with a 20th anniversary dinner at the Principality Stadium, where we are now. And, uh, uh, yeah, many drinks had. <laughs> Any tours lined up in, in terms of to celebrate 20 years? Any other uh, celebrations in the offing? Well, we're hoping to uh, finish the league off in style and then uh, looking to go up to Manchester for a bit of, a, a bit of an end-of-season tour. Now the Rhinos, again, they struggle to get clean ball. That's a great steal from Jack yeah, Weston nice there. nice steal from Jack Weston. As you said, an elusive lock. Oh, through the gap with ease is the skipper. Hamer, does that ball go forward? It does, and in fact, big Bosch as well. <laughs> All the way back from Wrexham Rhinos. Could have been a low-arm tackle from Hankins. Need to spread it now. Oh, numbers galore for the Lions oh. out wide here. Acres, butchered. acres of space on the far side. They've butchered that chance now. Uh, the Blue Shares and the Rhinos could capitalise on a counter-attack. They're going to keep it tight. Yeah, I believe it was the skipper, Hamer, who spilled it in midfield. He will be disappointed, but penalty for Cardiff Lions. They'll have another bite at this. But let's take another look at Hamer's carry then. Big player, unreal tackle. He's well tackled, fair play by uh, number 19, Bailey Wellings. A decent kick there from Scott Davis, the scorer of the Lions' first try, and another opportunity for the Lions. Just need to be that little bit more accurate this time with the handling. Watch out for the uh, five-man line-out and the Lions uh, so lining up the pod. What's the call here, then? Can you, can you, can you suss out what the call is? <laughs> is it a standard move, pre-prepared? Make sure Redding isn't listening. <laughs> yeah, there'll be scouts here. I don't think I'm giving much away if I say there'll be a couple of big carries up the middle. <laughs> yeah, quick change for the Rhinos. Owen Sinnott Davis onto the field. Mike Riley is what we've been told has gone off. Lions just about hold on to him. This the skipper again, Joel Hamer. Yes, well tidied up. Some big fours waiting to carry. Weston again. They've lost their shape here, Cardiff, slightly. Yeah, Lions trying to keep the ball moving quickly. But it's the speed of the ball that's caught them off guard, and it's another handling error and another rest bite for Wrexham Rhinos, and this time it was Mark Jenkins. Yeah, you can see the Cardiff uh, Lions. They messed up the line now slightly, then they lost their shape. The pods um, were out of position, and then maybe slightly disjointed in, in what they were going to do from uh, that situation. Yeah, very frustrating, uh, getting in the right field position and then uh, just not clinical enough to finish stuff off. Another big shove from Lions. Not many options here. Oh, oh Zach on forward. The ref's arm is out. The Lions look to steal it. But it has gone forward. Drax and Rhino's creating their own problems here. Oh, that's going to hurt, isn't it? A knock on by... Harris, the captain. I'm sure he's waiting and thinking about the clearance kick. Looking to aim that one downfield. Just takes his eye off the ball. And unrelenting pressure by the Lions. But a big opportunity. Just over 20 minutes gone of this IGR fixture between Cardiff Lions and Wrexham Rhinos. And a big opportunity. Bring it back here.
I wasn't sure for a second there that the ref was signaling a, a crooked feed. You yeah, know, Dan pulling maybe on the correct side of the scrub for a, a right footed hooker. There's a good shove as well from Cardiff Lions. For number eight, going himself, shimmies one way, shimmies the other. Oh, he's, as, he, as he twisted and turned to get that down, not quite yet then, Stevens. Good work from Wrexham Rhinos to get back. It was Stevens against Hankins, eight on eight. And Hankins wins that battle. Slow out the rucks, uh, out the scrum, but he does well to get back and ooh, hold that one up just. Yeah, yeah then Stevens may be going to against the grain of the scrum. Maybe usually for a number eight, you'd go with the grain, even though maybe you're picking into the nine. It'll be easier than running into uh, a six and eight who will be uh, waiting for you down that blindside channel. Oh, they'd let the ball bounce. Yeah, Paul comes from Lions, but it's the main man, Scott Davis, collects it. Huge tackle once again from the Rhinos. Again, Tom Hankins defensively putting in a shift. Yeah, brilliant start from Tom Hankins for the Rhinos. But the Lions keep the ball alive here. Stepping one way, then the other, dancing through the defence. Please, Craig. There's a lot of space on this near side. If Lions could get the ball through hands, using the big men at the moment. Or oh, force the ball. I think it's uh, Mark Jenkins wearing five. Didn't expect the pop up off the floor. There'll be a scrum to Wrexham Rhinos. But we'll have another glance at this. Scott Davis, you'll feel this one in the morning. Yeah, Scott Davis has got good pace, hasn't he? Good acceleration. Great pace for an old man, in fairness to him. Uh, <laughs> just could have done with a step there rather than running straight at him. Yeah, I think he was John Olomu. And in fairness, uh, Reese Craig at 10 there has uh, got good feet, despite being a good sign boy. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine saying that Cardiff Lions, you know, being in the capital, you draw players from all over Wales who have, who have moved and settled in the capital. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we were the the only inclusive club in um, in Wales for a long time. So yeah, players from uh, all over all over South Wales. Um, obviously, Swansea Vikings now. There's a big steal there from the Lions in the scrum, but once again. The handling error creeping in. But it was a big shove again from Cardiff Lions and it feels like the Lions have the power in the pack. Is that something that Cardiff Lions take pride of themselves that, you know, being a big pack, a powerful scrum scrumming side? Yeah, absolutely. Not so, not necessarily the biggest, but uh, there's, there's a lot of power there and uh, we got some good ball carriers. Yeah, Cardiff Lions, seemingly the stronger team on the park in this uh, opening, what, 20 minutes or so? 25 minutes on the clock, and again, the pack putting on the shove, and uh, reaping their rewards with the steal on the floor. Hankins needs to roll away. He's done well, Hankins on the floor. It was Poth Carey, who got, ooh, out the back door, lovely hands, Weston peeling around the breakdown. Inches short. Well, it does well not to get the white line fever and go for a second move. Oh, Has to acres, be a score. Acres of space, hands needed. Cutting back against the grain, big hit. And his second. Another try for Cardiff Lions. It's Jacob Mills, in fact, with the try. The assist to Howell James with the first. He wanted one of his own and he got over the line. Yeah, Jacob Mills, he's a, a physical specimen, he's a big lad playing 13. You could argue maybe he could have made life easier for the team by giving the pass. But he's got a bit of space, steps inside, he knows he has the strength. Bumps off. Number 26, Rhys Robinson. Fantastic uh, athletic player, Jacob, uh, but he wasn't going to pass that in a month of Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, another score. 
the Cardiff Lions. And the Lions are making the most of the Rhinos' narrow defence, spreading the ball out wide, and it was a tough ask. Yeah, a few changes happening in the background for Cardiff Lions, rotating that squad. And a nice punt from Scott Davis. His tally up to 11. The Lions' tally up to 21. Similarly, changes coming uh, on the park here. John, is it rotating um, substitution today or is it just uh, an eye looking forward to tomorrow? Yeah, that's right. Uh, rolling subs today, so uh, we'll, um, we'll we'll see what happens as the game develops. But, uh, yeah, we, we'll have some tired legs if everyone plays 80 tonight and 80 tomorrow. Yeah, and it is uh, a big park as well, isn't it? You look from up here and it's a, a vast ground and I'm sure most rugby pitches aren't quite as wide as this one. Oh, it's a it's a great pitch to play rugby and lots of space out there. So where do you guys play? Where, where's home usually then? Where's uh, the home fixtures usually held? We're based up at the Cardiff Harlequins ground in Whitchurch, the diamond ground. Uh, been there for a good five, six years. So where would have the, the, the original uh, home pitch been? Oh, originally it was uh, a small group of people with jumpers for goalposts uh, over Pont Canner Fields. So again, we've seen uh, some big carries by Tom Robinson. He's a try scorer. Tries to shove his way forward. Not the cleanest of connections on that kick. It's kept alive. But straight in, Jack Harris, the captain leading the defence. And a good take as well from Jack Weston. There's a saying in Welsh, I've got to say it here, um, for our Welsh listeners, a kick hossan, a sock kick, when you don't make a connection. It's a good saying. In what, yeah, I don't, I don't know if it translates exactly yeah, the same. It, but it hasn't quite, quite got the same ring to no, it in English. A, a kick, Hossan. A sock kick. Mm. Rhinos feed the line out. It's been yeah. mass. Oh, it's well, well won in the air by Lex Guest, but it's uh, obviously an area that Rex Rhinos need to work on. They're struggling to get clean ball. And Hankins gives him some attacking platform. Oh, lovely hands. One more needed. However, going himself, Rhys Robinson. He's offside in midfield. Prime position here, in front of the sticks. That must be from the line-out himself. Lions up early. Unlikely to see three points here. Big dummy, big shove. Another try. And it's the same man again for Wrexham Rhinos, Tom Robinson. The step, like Shane Williams, and then the power of Gethin Jenkins. You are Kern, he's not going to watch that again, is he? He's absolutely smashed out the way. Oh. Well, he'll be disappointed with that. I think he's laughing to himself as well, Ewan Hearn. Big try for Wrexham Rhinos, as similar to the other try. They needed to be next to score. They had to be next to score there. And the game is close again. Nine points in it. Yeah, an important score at an important time. The Lions were threatening to run away. And Tom Robinson showing how much of a threat he is in that Rhinos back line. Again, the Cardiff Lions, they'll be uh, disappointed with the standard they're tackling. Ewan Hearn. Not getting low enough and getting that leg drive going. Yeah, Ewan's only just come on. He takes a little while to warm up, bless him. <laughs> but no, in fairness, um, great stuff from the, the Rhinos moving themselves up the field into the right uh, positions and uh, capitalising. Yeah, Lions have made mass changes early on in the game. Oh, it's gone backwards. That's um, lenient refereeing, I'm sure, that on another day. That could have been called forwards. Oh, loads of space in the backfield, seen by Robinson. He's got a decent boot as well, hasn't he? Robinson, fair play to him. 
Showing his all-round play. Yeah, he started well for Wrexham Rhinos, certainly one of the star players for the Wrexham side. Yeah, after a half an hour, you quickly see who the key players are in both teams. You quickly pick out Robinson and Tom Hankins in the blue shirts. Then you're thinking about Hamer, the captain, Stevens, Howell James, Jacob Mills for the Lions. I think the Rhinos would like a, another score before the interval just to get that scoreboard within one score and keep the pressure on the Lions. It's been a quick sub for Wrexham Rhinos. Dave Dixon is coming on to the park for Wrexham. Off the park, Stuart Valentine. Short and line out, easy ball at the front for Jack Weston. Lions look very organised as they peel away with the ball once again. Rich Craig beating one, beating two. Space in front of him. Scramble defence from the Rhinos. They get across well, but there's a lot of space if the Lions was to move the ball from side to side. Rhinos defence very narrow. Yeah, Dave Dixon on for Rhinos, throwing himself about. Oh, there's plenty of space here and mismatches in numbers. They're forwards out in the back line for the Rhinos. Oh, here we go once again. Jacob Mills beating six defenders. It took two big men in the back to take him down. But quick ball for Lions. They need to get it wide. Good tackling. Somebody's lost a boot in the backfield. Yeah, I believe it was Jacob Mills as well. Good hands from Craig to gather the slightly high pass. Again, if the Lions look up, there'll be space out left. Blue shirts slightly narrow. Oh, pinched by the Rhinos. If they could just get a boot to ball here. Acres of space in the backfield. Another boot got missing. It's a penalty. It looks like a penalty to, to the Wrexham Rhinos here. Yeah, this was Jacob Mills again, though. John... You've mentioned such an athlete he is. Would you have expected him to score from there? <laughs> he would have expected himself to score from there, yeah. He's a fantastic runner with the ball. Uh, great off both feet. Uh, if if we could teach him to pass, uh, it would be fantastic. <laughs> i tell you what, it looks like he's had a fresh trim as well for the big occasion at the Principality. It looks like they've got a pre-prepared move, but I think uh, it's probably a bit too far out to try and run a dummy, a dummy set move from outside your own 22. And the Lions are 20 metres back. They need to have that gap, don't they? Being generous with their 10 metres. Or was it the AR kind of giving the... A dodgy mark. <laughs> Here they come again. The Rhinos, big carry this time from it's Owen, Owen Sinner -Davis. Davis. Yeah, he's come onto the field trying to impress the coaches. Hankins, again, impressive first half for the number eight. Oh. Yeah, slightly isolated, however. Ball does trickle forward from his hands. But this was Sinnott Davis again. Cutting the ball. Throwing Scott Davis off. Beating another. I believe it was yeah, Marsh. Big, big left hand, wasn't he? He pushed off four or five of the red shirts. This time, scrum for the Lions in their own half. But we know what the Lions are capable of. There's a lot of gaps in the Rhinos' defence. If I can ask, they, uh, John, which position did you play? Uh, I'm short and gobby, so I was a scrum half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the brains are not the outfit they say in my ear. Here they peel around this near side. Good hands into Craig. Craig with the options. James now beating... The defender, Hankins, only one to beat. Ball back inside. Scott Davis. He's got another. What a try for Cardiff Lions. 
and he's crossed once again. And that's his second of the game. And you can see it, John, once he's got space in front of him. To be fair, the hard work was done by Howell James. And Scott Davis just got to score another try, an easy score for him in the end. Yeah, great move. It's, uh, it's amazing what you can do when you run support lines and actually pass the ball. Yeah, and the scorer of that try will once again catch his breath and prepare to take on the tee once again. Rex and Rhinos, they're getting punished, especially in the backs. Oh, lovely. Curls it in. Never in doubt. He's having a great game, Scott Davis. Four conversions, two ties. He's just on the shoulder. He's, he's got that instinct, the poacher's instinct, to be in the right place to get the try. Yeah, very experienced player, Scott. Uh, been playing a long, long time, so, uh, yeah, knows how to poach a try. Well, the hamstrings are bearing up well. Oh, you've cursed it now. <laughs> <laughs> I have to take him off, save him for tomorrow, lads. Changes for the Rhinos. The whistle's gone, so the, the restart will be taken again. So the captain, Jack Harris, of the Rhinos has been replaced by number 14, Gavin Prigmore. And Mike Riley, I think, as well, leaving the field for the Blue Shirts. Callum Coleman on the way to the park. And it looks like a healthy scoreboard now, does it, for the Lions? 28-12 with half-time approaching. Yeah, much healthier. Uh, interesting to see what we do uh, with changes uh, at half-time. One thing I ask, they stick to the numbers of their shirts <laughs> to help us up here. <laughs> yeah, we've had a couple of shirt swaps throughout the day so far, I'm sure. There's a couple more here. However, peeling away with the ball. Sam Marsh, who's come onto the park instead of Kyle Bothcurry. Now counter-attack for Rhinos. There's space. Can he give the pass? Does he need to give the pass? Oh, oh stripped away in the tackle. Yeah, great work, Joel Hamer there, stripping the ball. Slowing stuff down with the prop. John O'Davis. Ooh. Again, it's gone forward. I think on a, on a second look here, maybe Hayme will be lucky to get the, get the strip because I think they may have been hitting the deck when the ball popped loose. There's good counter-attacking run. Yeah, it is Wellings in that 19 jersey. Maybe Jest gets there before he hits the deck. Does well, the captain. His mum, Karen, will be very proud of that one. <laughs> Joel Hamer, captain for Cardiff Lions. Influential player so far in this game. Any tales about Joel Hamer that are, <laughs> that are suitable for, uh, yeah, suitable for, broadcast. <laughs> for broadcast? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> but plenty of tales that are not suitable, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, number 22... Um, Dan Pullen is uh, nursing a knee injury or something here. Yeah, Dan Pullen just off the park, so I think he's just been replaced. Taking a bump. Mm. Doesn't look to be moving too easy. So a quick change for the Lions. Mm, and change, yeah. change at scrum half. They'll have another line out. So once again, you can see the depth that Cardiff Lions have. They had the back about yeah. nearly by the 22. The winger on the far side almost got chalk on his boots. And they look to spray it wide. That one not quite accurate, but they do hold on to possession. And it was the replacement, Sam Marsh. And it's a penalty 
to Wrexham Rhinos. Yeah, Tom Hankins in there with a smashing tackle again. And it's Tom Robinson already with a brace of tries trying to spark the Wrexham Rhinos into life. Yeah, I'm out from a referee as well. Penalty advantage for Wrexham Rhinos. Oh, big Boom. carry. Great carry. Yeah, Reese Robinson. Gast put down on his backside. He'll yeah. take the penalty. Yeah, go quickly again. And he does go again. Tom Robinson. An offload inside to Tom Hankins. Hankins almost stripped from the ball. And all over it. The Lions, but the Rhinos just about hold on. Cope. Good tackle by John O'Davis. Riding the hit. Need to throw the way the red shirts. That should be a penalty. The referee has seen it. I thought maybe the angle for the referee on the far side was unfavourable, but the, the ref does manage to catch a glimpse of that one. Rhinos here. Corner or tap or scrum, I wonder. Well, with the performance of Tom Robinson, just get him to tap and go himself. Yeah, there they go. It's uh, Lex Guest. He's isolated. The blue shirts need to get around him. I'll tell you what, that all came from... Joel Hamer's low chop around Lex Guest's legs. And that'll be up for the first half. Scott Davis, he's seen enough. He's done enough in the first half. And that'll be it. Half time here. Cardiff Lions, 28. Wrexham Rhinos, 12. And they've been absolutely potent in the first half, especially that man, Scott Davis in this IGR fixture in the road to Principality, supported by Go.Compare. Halftime score, Cardiff Lions 28, Wrexham Rhinos 12.
Marail Hanner ar y ffordd yma yn y Principality rhwng Llewod Caerdydd a Rhinos Wrexham. Y sgôr ar yr hanner, y Llewod 28, Rhinos 20. Mae'r tîm o Caerdydd yn edrych. Yn dda hen o ma'n edrych yn brofiadol. Here we go, the second half in this IGR fixture between Cardiff Lions and Wrexham Rhinos. And as we saw in the first half, the Lions, they look drilled, they look disciplined. As they would be IGR UK champions back to back in 2022 and 2023. An early penalty to the Lions and an opportunity to put this ball downfield through the boot of well, I'd normally say Scott Davis, but it looks as if Davis might have gone off the field to start the second half. They've gone short. Well, taken quickly by Cardiff Lions deep in the 22. Oh, good volley upfield. Yeah, unorthodox. Straight off the training park, that one. <laughs> yeah, some good football skills from Jacob Mills. Yeah, he's yeah. taken a leaf out of Nico Williams' book from last night's fixture, Wales against Finland in the Euro qualifiers playoffs. Wrong stadium, though. We're just down the road from here. <laughs> Ball being fed in by Wrexham Rhinos. Yeah, again, that Wrexham line now struggling for accuracy. Not straight, so it's going to be a scrum down for the Reds of Cardiff. And if uh, Wrexham can get that line out to fire, maybe not something they can resolve tonight. You think they'd have a, a better platform to launch that midfield. Get the likes of Tom Robinson running hard on the ball. Yeah, it's a real shame the uh, Rhinos had a pod just outside 10 and we we're ready to go. Ball out for the Lions. Three on two situation here, peeling through once again. Jacob Mills, ball back inside. An easy enough try for Cardiff Lions. Rich Craig under the sticks. And Cardiff Lions, a fantastic five here at the Principality. So Jacob Mills, he can pass. He can pass off a left as well. I take it all back, fair play. <laughs> yeah, good support from the boys there. He had options left and right and uh, went back inside to uh, Reese Craig to finish it off. Again, it's just a, a disappointing attempt for a tackle by, uh, I think, Liam Crockroft. Just doesn't get low enough and driving his legs. And Jacob Mills with a lovely left-handed pass. Hal James taking over the kicking duties, and another two. Cardiff Lions, 35. Wrexham Rhinos, 12. And it all came through that lovely line break from Jacob Mills, and there's a lot of gaps in that Rhinos defence, isn't there? And it's becoming fairly easy for the Lions to cut them open now. Yeah, a bit team, aren't they? Um, of getting their, their heads and shoulders through the tackle. Maybe showing... Oh, hello. Lovely restart from yeah, Tom Robinson, who's certainly been the player to watch. Yeah, I think Dave Dixon was the one on the far side receiving the ball. There was a knock here for... Is it John Davis wearing three, or has it been a replacement of swapping shirts? Doesn't look great. Yeah, he's taking a bit of a bump. Yeah, it is John Davis on the floor receiving some treatment. A couple of physios coming on to give assistance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so it's uh, going to be a, a second or two here, maybe just to read some treatment. 
But for Cardiff, they, they're in complete control of this contest now. 35 points to 12 to the good. It's uh, a comfortable scoreboard at the moment. But the Rhinos have shown that they've been able to strike back uh, in the first half. If we look at the tries again. Yeah, an absolute try fest here in this IGR fixture between Cardiff Lions and Wrexham Rhinos started off. Scott Davis not pulling a hammy that time under the sticks. And it's been pretty much all Cardiff, hasn't it? Most of the game. Another lovely break. Jacob Mills he got two assists in this game to add to his try. And it was Howell James crossing in the end. Rhinos, they weren't out of this game at all at this point. Tom Robinson doing the hard work himself. And then coming forward, Cardiff Lions. After they scored, they wanted to knock back with a try for Jacob Mills. Tom Robinson, he's been elusive, hasn't he? But... Once again, we've said Jacob Mills, his name so often, Howell James. There's been, there's a few standout players for the Lions, isn't there? And they're showing themselves tonight. Yeah, Wrexham was about to, to mention they're a young team, new team, maybe showing their lack of experience, um, not up to the to the standards of, of the Lions. They're developing. We've seen some weaknesses in their, in their line out defensively as well, maybe not as abrasive as the Lions, who are much hardened over over years of experience. But that will come. Uh, it will develop. Um, they're a new team, but it's good to see more teams, uh, John, in Wales, um, now taking part in the league. Is it four teams in all? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, IGR growing from strength to strength. And uh, as you say, the Rhinos are uh, a young team, but uh, I'm sure they'll develop and grow. Yeah, good to see uh, John O'Davis setting up. Looks like he may be taking a bump to the head. Yeah, all precautions being carried out here by the medical staff. It looks like they're starting to smile, cracking a bit of a joke now. I think he's all right. Maybe he's had a bit of gas in air, I'm not sure. <laughs> take him off, wrap him in. Cotton wool as he trots off to the ovation of the crowd here and the Principality supporting both Lions and Rhinos. Yeah, good to see him walking off. Yeah, maybe there won't be a night in Mary's for them tonight. Cup of tea and straight to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he'll argue against that prospect. There'll be a scrum here for Wrexham Rhinos. And they get set, ready to feed into this scrum, but they desperately need to be the next to score. If Lions score next, I think it'd be Curtains in this game. That's a good scrum by the Lions, again showing their power in that front five. And Howell James releasing the strike on the Mills. Again, another unorthodox pass by Jacob Mills, but he is showing that he's a more than just a runner. Yeah, but it's another scrum here as we take another glimpse at the back line of Cardiff Lions running away with ball in hand. Bit of a net ball pass there. It's good to see the Cardiff team seem like a balanced team, don't they? You've got a strong pack and, and a decent backline as well. Yeah, absolutely. We've got uh, some good ball carriers up front and uh, you know we can spread it wide and run on the outside shoulder when we can. I, I will mention that Jacob would want you to say it's a, a basketball pass, not a, not a netball pass. He'd be <laughs> upset about that one. <laughs> tomato, tomato, some would say. <laughs> ball out, Rhinos, flat pass. Yes, better from the Wrexham side. 
Ball kind pops of, out. Kind of lines slightly on their heels defensively there, but somehow or other they've turned the ball over. If they go left, potentially some, some space there. Rhino still lined up in an attacking sense. Yeah, penalty, Lions as they slow it down ever slow so slightly. And we'll see. Oh, they've gone, they've gone short. But there is space on this near side. Ball out to the skipper, Hamer, beating one, beating two, boshing another off the ball, offload into Howell James, he's going to have the gas, cuts back inside, and it's a score in the corner for Howell James, his second of the game, and Cardiff Lions are running away with this one, 40 points to the team in red, and we can see why the Cardiff Lions are back-to-back -back IGR champions. Yeah, Hamer showing the hammer, as you mentioned, start off with, smashing through, not for the first time. But that's that awareness, isn't it? Fair play to him. He pulls the man on the inside shoulder, gives the pass on the outside, and Howell James having the sense to keep on his run. The big scream for the ball, and he's in for the score. He's going to have a look with his boot as well. Yeah, very experienced uh, rugby player, Joel, the captain. Uh, Pontypool boy originally, and... Uh, uh, real asset to our team. Yeah, great score once again for Cardiff Lions as the Rhinos starting to run out of steam. And then here in the corner, oh, this looks a good kick. It's got the right line, not quite the... Not well, quite the power from O.L. James, the first unconverted try for Cardiff Lions by 40 points to the good. The team in red are warming up quite nicely for the rest of their IGR season. Yeah, maybe showing their strength and depth as well, that some of the replacements have come on, kept the levels. Wrexham maybe not with the same experience on, the, on their substitutes bench. And here come the Lions again. The Rhinos slightly out of shape in the back line defensively. And if the Lions look up, they could capitalise again. Oh, good turnover. Maybe knocked on on the floor. Oh, hands by the Rhinos. Hankins. And that's a good contest between Tom Hankins and Joel Hamer. Two decent back rowers going head to head. Not releasing from the tackle. Cardiff Lions, I believe it was Jack Weston. And there's Mass changes here for Cardiff Lions. Yeah, there may be a shirt swap here as well. And there's some Cardiff players who are going to start playing in skins. <laughs> yeah, Cardiff Lions, I guess, one eye on the big fixture in the league tomorrow. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad John's here for, for the shirt swap so you maybe can point out who's who. I'll do my best. They're so far away, I can barely see him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, big turnover. Yeah. Dave Dixon stripping the ball away. It was actually Ewan Hearn for Cardiff Lions. Yeah, they were running it. The ball from absolutely everywhere, Joel Hamer. No other space on this occasion. Yeah, I'd love to say Cardiff Lions can run it from everywhere and we're showing that, but I think it's more an indictment of our poor kicking game. <laughs> so they could be a note and assessment for tonight. A debrief later on. So back to the penalty in midfield. Yeah, slightly fortunate, must be said. Dan Ball. Number 18, Gavin Wong over the ball here. And it looks like they're going to go for the corner. And the Rhinos are not. Oh, 
Well, an interesting kick. You did mention the kicking game. <laughs> <laughs> or did they want to practice a, a liner from this position? Well, it must be sad as well. The hooker taking a kick. It's a it's a bold move. If no one else is going to do it, he'll have a pop. He's really multitasking this one. <laughs> Five man line out. Called. Yeah, Gavin Wong has he moved into the scrum half position? Oh, good, good line, good run, good pace on the the ball. But Dan Ball, not on the ball. Peeling around once again. The star man for Wrexham Rhinos. The ball is in the hands of Wellings. Oh, it's a great passage of play from the full-back, Bailey Wellings. Yeah, considering the pass... He had to mop that up somehow or other. Robinson drawing in the defenders. Oh, oh that pace. Bouncing off his knee almost. But fair play to uh, Rhys Craig. Does well to get a big Bosch in there. Yeah, good meters made by the Rhinos. Feels like the game is gone now for the Wrexham side. But for a young team like Wrexham Rhinos... It's a good learning curve playing against a team like Cardiff Lions who are extremely experienced. And they'll have a learning or two from this game. Yeah, this is going to be part of their development. An easy scissor, dummy scissors in midfield, releasing Jacob Mills. Oh, he's off to the races. This is going to be another try, surely. The basketball pass. To the winger, cutting back inside. Could be caught, he's got to be careful. Oh, and he spilled it as well. He spilled it. Disappointment. That's got to be fine at the end of this by the fines committee. Two on one on the outside, he goes himself and butchers a golden opportunity. But again, Jacob Mills wreaking havoc in midfield. Plenty of gas, poor defending by Wrexham. He's just got to draw the man and give. But fair play, it's great tracking back by uh, the Rhinos. Was it Sinner Davis, I believe, with a tackle? The try saving tackle. He knows he's on the big screen now as well. He's just clocked it. <laughs> he can laugh to himself tonight. Yeah, there's an injury for Cardiff Lions. Second bump, and it could be uh, Jacob Mills. And considering there's a, a game tomorrow, he's uh, someone they'll want to keep healthy and fit. Could be a, a, a knee or an ankle. Yeah, you could just see in the, in the foreground of that shot before the try saving tackle, it was Jacob Mills down just inside the 10 meter line for the Cardiff Lions. Be plenty of ice on that tonight. Yeah, they're going to wait for the injury. Yeah, struggling with his left ankle or knee doesn't seem like a good one. That's going to take more than a ice bag, you think, to recover. Yeah, it's uh, disappointing to see him leave. Been carried off. Replacement. It's a shame to see Jacob Mills go off. He was really enjoying his evening here at the Principality. There's a big opportunity for the Cardiff Lions to put the squeeze on in this scrum. We've seen most of the afternoon, most of the evening. Oh, good scrum again by Cardiff Lions. That's been a potent weapon. 
illegally used this time and Wrexham, yeah, not on the mark. They know this a day out in the Principality, they're going to run it from everywhere now. The game may be lost, playing for pride. Still time on the clock, a bit of a looping pass. Oh, it's a big punt as well from Tom Robinson. Strange decision to tap it, then punted downfield though. Pressure. Oh, is that it? Strange decision, but it's come to fruition. Be it for a high tackle. It's a shame for the Lions. Oh, it was. Yeah, it was. Seatbelt tackled by number 14, Gavin Prigmore. Line out here. Lions will feed this one into the fray. As we wait for. Yeah, uncontested. Wrexham are struggling with their line out options, not putting a pod up. A lot of space and behind the Lions, the defensive line. They haven't got anyone in the backfield. A bit of a nameless kick by, by Cardiff. I think they'll be disappointed with that tactical decision. But you are right if this one's sent downfield. There's no one at home for the Lions. Yeah, it's a penalty to the Lions. They've gone quick off the mark. But Gavin Wong eager to get off the mark soon and quickly. And yeah. we see... The Lions, they want to run this one in. Oh, Hankins flying in, but not sticking the tackle. Hamer met well by the Rhinos' defence. Knocked on, on the floor. But Cardiff's trying to run riot. They could really let loose of the shackles and put Wrexham, Rhinos to the sword there. There's a feeling up here. Well, Wrexham may be out of energy. Legs have gone. And the Cardiff uh, Lions are, are roaring. That's probably on someone's bingo card, the Lions roaring. Halfway into the second half, for one Gwyneth with the roar for the Lions. But absolutely right, Cardiff Lions have been running riot here. Oh, that's a, a big shove. Hankins does well off the base, uh, base as an eight. The retreating scrum is always difficult. Yeah, offside again. Lions were disappointed there. Encroaching into the five metre of that uh, hindmost foot. Yeah, they take their time. Oh, and they'll go for a tap. It's a long way to run in from here for the Rhinos. Yeah, Enrique de la O. <laughs> Good evening, sir. Box kick. Down the park, off, offside here. I think Enrique de la O was playing for the penalty. <laughs> and come back down for the penalty. But it feels like both sides starting to slow the game down ever so, so slightly. Rhino was looking out of energy at this point, but they'll continue to go short with a tap. Big goosey yeah. from Tom Robinson. He has been a stand-up performer for the Wrexham Rhinos. I'm sure if they had a couple more Tom Robinson in the team, they, they could have been uh, closer on the scoreboard. Ball out. Hankins. Offside ref. And referees can have a word here. Yeah. Wonder what the referee has seen. Yeah, he was just a lazy runner, got in offside, got the tackle in. Maybe a couple of sloppy penalties consecutively given away. Making the referee think uh, it's time to have a word.
There's a, another couple of changes coming onto the field as we see. Is Lions it? is number 17. No, it's not a shirt swap. I think you're seeing a bib come over. Is it Nathan Marsh coming on? Yeah, Nathan Marsh coming on there for... Uh, Yeah, Cockcroft is going off the park and replaced by Stevie Harris. And Enrique Dello Delao will come off the field and back on the park. Elliot Minchel is on oh, the field. Poor error by Wrexham Rhinos from the penalty. They knock it on in an offside position. And Ian Stevens. Waste no time in setting the Reds of the Lions oh. loose. Is it a bit of an arm up there? It's getting tasty out there. Tom Hankins in there again. Star defender in the uh, Rhino team, leading by example. Gavin Wong into the skipper, Joel Hamer. Balls coming out quickly for the Lions. They go towards the short side, big carry. Oh, oh, pummeled backwards. But they come towards this near side. Another big carry this time. Jack Weston, but there's plenty of bodies. They come towards this side. I think it was uh, Ethan Randalls with the hit, the defensive hit. But it's got to be a try. Couple of passes. And it's an easy score for Cardiff Lions. Dan Ball crossing the try line. And that is Cardiff Lions' seventh try, seven heaven for Cardiff Lions. And they are purring at the Principality. Yeah, Dan Ball, it was about, it was about to come, was it? it was obvious that, yeah, the pressure was just too much. Yeah, just when we thought the uh, energy had gone on both sides, they both picked it up and uh, great attack and display, but uh, some fantastic defence. Yeah, and Dan Ball, proud to be on the score sheet. And then it'll chuckle there on the halfway line. And um, just out of shot here, we've got Cardiff Lions hooker getting ready to take this one. Do we see this often in a Lions game? Not usually, but you're not at the Principality very often, so why not? Oh, well, that's it. how you did it. That's how you do it. Oh, and Lewis. Was it a good old-fashioned toe poke? He's an absolute stalwart of the club, in fairness to Owain. He's a, a fantastic ball carrier. We saw him uh, put a penalty as a touch, throw the line out in, and now he's put one over the post. Does he practice these often in training, do you think, or is that a spirit of the moment? Without the principality, why not have a go? I think he thinks he's Dan Carter today. <laughs> <laughs> Cardiff Lions. Healthy lead here for the Lions. The back-to-back -back IGR champions proving that they are the best of the business and putting Rex and Rhinos to the sword here. Great interplay there between Nathan Marsh and uh, Owen Lewis to uh, go up the right-hand side. Yeah, it was just a four pass in there, unfortunately. The Rhinos with a rare opportunity in this, uh, well, towards this. Lions half. They've been really on the back. They've been really they've been really on the back foot, the Rhinos in the second half. The score was at 14-5. Uh, well they're about anyway at half time. My notes are probably wrong anyway. Uh, 28-12. 28-12. I am looking at the wrong part of the page. <laughs> <laughs> but as as you mentioned, first half, you know, Cardiff Lions took the lead, but Rex and Rhinos, they didn't give up, but it just feels like it's that experience and the endurance of the Cardiff Lions have just taken the game out of the Rhinos' hands. It's another big, big shove from the Lions. Yeah, Hankins needs to mop this up. He's done well, fair play to him. It's always difficult on the retreat, and the Rhinos are off. A bullocking run. Uh, fakes the cheeky chip as well. Quick ball needed. Oh, could be yellow Penalty card. Penalty advantage. They need could to get out towards card. this near side wing. Going himself, Tom Robinson. Lines with some lazy runners as well. Robinson. 
Oh, Robinson is trying his best for his team. Just needs a couple of bodies in support. Still on here for the Rhinos, though. Not anymore. No. Here's the question. Looks like a player's just done his ankle as well, just in front of the referee. Yeah, I think on any other day, apart from the principality, this could have been a, a sin binning for deliberate offside. But again, Tom Hankins, super, superb work. That's a great break, lovely show and go. Three red shirts around him. Just a side entry, doesn't get on to the back foot. Do you think that should have been the yellow rose? I think so, yeah. Considering he gave a warning up in the 22 over here in, a, in an attacking position, they're under the pump and defensively. The ball's quick, it's clean. Um, and I think in, in probably most scenarios, that would have been a yellow card. The injury may have distracted the referee. It's mm -hmm. a, in essence, it's an exhibition match at the Principality. I know both sides want to win, but he maybe doesn't want to send anybody to the sin bin. Yeah. But it was um, Owen Sinot Davis with a break for Wrexham Rhinos. He's, he's carried been a, well, hasn't he, when he's been on? Yeah, there's been a couple of players have stood out for the Rhinos that you likes of Tom Hankins, Owen Sinot Davis and Tom Robinson. John, is this your first time watching the Rhinos? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Impressed? Not seen them play before. And uh, yeah, they got some good hard runners uh, and put some good stuff together. Lots to build on. Absolutely. Injuries looking fairly nasty on the ankle of one of the Rhinos players. So in terms of the kind of flying season, you're saying there's a game tomorrow against Reading. Um, how, many, how many games left in the season? When When is the uh, grand final scheduled for if you do get there? Now you put me on the spot. Uh, <laughs> I, it's one or two left uh, and then Southern final uh, in in April, and then May would be the, the UK final if we made it. So I'm going to test you even further. At the <laughs> moment, I'm not sure if you, kind of, if you keep tabs on the, uh, on the Northern Conference. Who's up there at the moment? Who's uh, pushing the pace up there? Oh, I, I haven't, to be honest. Uh, you know, you just got to play what's in front of you. That's what I'm going with. <laughs> Good answer, yeah. Concentrating yourselves. And this is us having a, another look at the tries in the second half. Joel Hamer, the skipper, leading by example. And Howell James, the gas, the power, the finish. Fair play to Howell James. Some good pumping of the arms there. Good tackers. <laughs> A serious sprinter, Howell James. And Dan Ball with that last try for the Lions. Yeah, it's the same to see another nasty bump. Um, we've seen, what was it? John o Davis for the Cardiff Lions having to, to leave with some assistance. Uh, and unfortunately, a Wrexham Rhinos player will be having to be assisted off as well. Is that for Dan Ka Cabezas? Yeah, Dan Cabezas. Well, they're enjoying their time at the Principality. The injury looking nasty for the yeah. Rhinos. There he is. The man with all the fans at the Principality. Dan... Cabezas. Well, he would have enjoyed his afternoon afternoon a little bit more if he'd have scored that golden <laughs> opportunity he had earlier. How, how much of a ribbon will he get tonight? Oh, we won't let him forget that. Fair play. I, I think he thought he'd already scored it. Yeah, probably planning his celebration, I'd imagine. Oh, I know, he's rehearsing it now. <laughs> if I'd have scored, I would have done this. Yeah, he needs a, bit, a little bit of humbling from time to time, I guess. Everyone does. Yes. 
Looks like he's had a fresh trim as well and, and nice little short back and sides for Dan Cabezas. And um, he's had a busy afternoon, has the winger. Yeah, unfortunate. The bump here to uh, the Wrexham Rhinos. Taking the sting out of the game. We we're going to take, uh, take our time. Harry Cope, I think number seven is sure to uh, receive the treatment. Yeah, we're receiving a, a warm round of applause. And it is Cope. Hopefully he'll be okay. Yeah, a lot of the boys going out. He looks visibly upset. Yeah, he's in pain. Poor chap. Yeah, hopefully he'll get the recovery he needs to get back on the field as soon as possible for the Rhinos. But that shows how much his teammates think of him. Yeah, I'm sure 14 high fives is going to help him <laughs> at the moment if he's got an injured shoulder as well. Looks like it might be he the ankle. Yeah, he's got his boot off. It's going to be hurting, isn't it? Yeah, but not the way one would like to leave the park of the Principality. Yeah, go on. But, um, yeah, the man with all the fans smiling at the moment. He's seen his face on the big screen again. He, Let's, hope he still watching. Let's hope he's still watching. Yeah, I'm not sure if he is. Well, the game's going to restart before um, he sees himself drop the ball over the line. What a move, what a, what a play from deep, going coast to coast. And he's just got to go five extra metres, doesn't get there. Anyway, Rex and Rhinos, they're on the attack. John, you'll have to make sure he sees that one from us. Oh, we'll play not a loop, don't you worry. Yeah, we'll clip it up for you. Be on TikTok in the morning. Oh, that's a good tackle. Manton, I think, was just pummeled into the floor. They go quick. The Lions out wide. Well, that's disappointing. Maybe chancing too much of their arm there. Thinking the uh, Rhinos defence had gone to sleep. Yeah, it'd be nice for Wrexham Rhinos to get another score on the board before the end of play. They deserve something in the second half. Yeah, I'm sure kind of Lions will be thinking the other way that the Rhinos not to get a score on the line to, to get 50. But in terms of a contest, yeah. You do want to see a one-sided affair. But the Lions have been the far more superior team on the park. They've been led well by Scott Davis, Jacob Mills, who unfortunately went off injured, Howell James. Well, is I'll that, is that, yeah, is that I'll Jacob Mills in disguise in a 17 shirt? He's back on the field. He snuck back on. He, well, le see, he, he left with a broken ankle and he's back on. He it, knows he could have a hat trick. That's what it is. It was just attention seeking. Nothing wrong with him. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's uh, sliced into touch. Some good chasing by three red shirts. Yeah, Bailey Wellings in all sorts of pressure. No, nothing much he could do about that kick. Just put it off the park, make it safe. Line out on this near side. This lion side They're gonna be keen to get over that 50 point benchmark. And it's a good line out, well executed. Flat ball, cutting back against the grain, Ewan Hearn. The ball back for That's the Ewan Lions. Hearn now. There's acres of space on the far side. Jacob Mills beating one, good offload, almost. Oh, knocked on. Oh, Cabezas was almost on the end of that ball. It's not going to be his day, is it? Downfield goes oh. Rhinos. It's a, it's a poor kick and there's a big opportunity. 
the Lions can collect. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that one is definitely going in the group he chat. He is fuming. Absolutely fuming. Things are getting tasty. They've got to be careful. And Jack Weston with uh, Edith Minshall. I'm not sure what happened there, but things are threatening to overspill. It's a penalty for that reaction. But I think it was Liam Jenkins, number 25. Oh, that's a big pass. Knocked on again. Some sloppy handling by the Rhinos. Fatigue kicking in for the Rhinos. Cardiff Lions eyeing the 50 points. Showing no mercy, I think. There'll be a couple of Lions players who'll want to get over that white line at the Principality. They'll all be queuing up. My money's on Jacob Mills here. On the angle. I hope it's Dan Cabezas. <laughs> <laughs> to make up for his previous sins, yeah. Bit of patience before the scrum. He's fed ball out. Beating one. Yeah, Stevens. He's got some good feet for a, a big man. Castillo flowed in and oh, look who it is. It's it in. It is Cabezas. Yeah, he's going to be happy with that one. Dan Cabezas on the big screen. The crowd are showing their appreciation for Dan Cabezas and he's going to be very chuffed with himself for that one yeah, it all comes down to the number 8 yeah, yeah, Stevens fends off the first man draws another two defenders and no mistake this time by Cabezas <laughs> look at him, he's chuffed to bits yeah he's going to be pleased with himself We see you and Hearn, I think, now in the 13 shirt previously worn by Jacob Mills. Not a, not a bad effort, falls short. Actually, she was there. Yeah, the conversion not quite on it for the Lions, but this is it once again. Dan Cabezas doing the most of. Yeah, Jan Stevens is hard work. Yeah, it was an easy finish on that occasion. Just had to clasp the ball with both hands and flop over. But he's on the scoreboard. 40 points is the margin between these two sides. And oh, it's knocked on. The Rhinos, can they get a, a consolation score late on? The difference between these two sides clear to see. But again, Wrexham Rhinos, Tom Hankins again involved. Just a word on Great the Rhinos. Yeah, the Rhinos is number eight. He's been everywhere. He's knocked on in the previous play. Scrum to the Rhinos, but it was a great jackal. I think it was number two, Kane Manton in there. Straight on the ball, even though there were four or five red shirts over, over the ball. And all this, all this contest is over as a, as a competitive competition with the 40-point margin. Wrexham Rhinos will want to have something to remember for their day out in the capital. Not sure if they're staying the night tonight, but um, yeah, I'm sure there are a few stories shared on that bus home to Wrexham. Penalty advantage to the Rhinos, and here we go again. Tom Hankins, Hankins offloads. 
and the Rhinos into the 22. Paul Davis with a carry. They go over the ball again. Ian yeah, Stevens. But definitely a star performer for the Rhinos. Tom Hankins, ably assisted by Tom Robinson. Tap and go. They've gone quickly here. Robinson it is. Robinson beating one, beating two. Oh, what a fantastic finish from the inside centre. Oh. oh, unselfishly as well. That would have been a hat-trick for Tom Robinson. But palms it off to Dave Dixon. Very unselfish from Tom Robinson, who's been a class act for Wrexham Rhinos. And take a look at this. Big step, beating one, hand off. Ooh, see you later. He's got a bit of pace and fair play. Dave Dixon, <laughs> the easiest trial scored all season. It's a big coach as well to his teammate. Appreciation for handing him the try. Yeah, fair play to the Rhinos. Uh, kept at it and I think it's well deserved. And a rare error by Robinson. He strikes the upright. Bit of a goose step. Change direction. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> it's the easiest try. He'll ever score. As the rain starts pouring here at the Principality. But it's not going to dampen the Lions' parties tonight with a couple of minutes left the lions are going to want the last word and they go again corner i know buffalo back inside oh great intercept by lex guest yeah, it wasn't quite oh, oh straight in the side oh, well james yeah that was cheeky to say the least if he thought he could get away with that one the ref brings it back <laughs> and i'm not sure where they're finding the energy trying to go coast to coast well, there's only two minutes left, but there's uh, a long way to go to the, the other end of the field. Yeah. Boom. Oh. Yeah, less than two to go. John, are you pleased with the way Cardiff have played? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, some big ball carriers uh, managed to move it wide and exploit the space uh, out wide. And uh, it's an antidote to the kick tennis we uh, tend to see, isn't it? If both teams want to tap and go from their own halves. Yeah, and the kind of lines go again. Oh, James. Oh, huge bombard again from Tom Robinson. Go on, sir. <laughs> oh, why did he chop back? His legs oh. are gone. Absolute wrecking ball. Oh, and there's a bit of afters on top of Tom Robinson. Yeah, Jacob Mills wasn't having it. Oh, they're off again. Oh, Good hands. And the, the Lions in. are going to... Oh, big tackle. This is what we all want to see. Robinson, is he in there again? He's at... No, I think he was uh, Jack Harris. Oh, but it was huge from Tom Robinson. Oh. <laughs> Sit down. I think this is Out my... Out of my way. I bet here we come. No... Enough is enough. But oh, they come Jacob again. Mills. Jacob Mills scores to put out that fire from Tom Robinson. Jacob Mills, second of the game for the outside centre. And I believe that'll be that in this clash of the IGR teams, Lions against Rhinos. Yeah, and Cardiff Lions deservedly maybe getting the final words because they've been the far superior team and um, led by Jacob Mills. Could even be his hat trick, I think. And that restores that 40 point margin on the scoreboard with a kick to come by Ewan Hearn. Oh, lovely slot. Chips it over. Beautiful. To see out of the game from Ewan Hearn. And that'll be. The last of the action. And a ding-dong of a game here between Cardiff Lions and Wrexham Rhinos. Plenty of action. And, boys, that was a feast of rugby.
I enjoyed it. It was really good. Fair play to Rex and Ryan as he stuck with Cardiff Lions early on. But the Lions showing their experience, um, their wealth of, of depth maybe on that bench just to, to take complete control of the game in the second half. And, you know, some top, top performances by the likes of Jacob Mills, Howell James, um, Yayan Stevens, Joel Hamer for Cardiff Lions. <laughs> and Jacob Mills with the, the celebrations as well. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty standard for Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> Great to see at the Principality Cardiff Lions against Wrexham Rhinos. John, you you surprised with the Lions' performance, or are you used to this sort of level from from your side? Yeah, it was a great game. In fairness, um, you know we've got some big ball carriers. We know what they can do, but it's uh, nice to move it wide uh, and exploit the space. Um, but yeah, lovely, lovely day of rugby, and uh, it's nice not to see too many kicks and uh, going end to end. Absolutely, John. Thank you very much for joining us. Oz Dilchmaur Amamino. Dilchmaur, what do you think? And and Brown are Ben Egan do a Kair Bach stigloi chunger chada i i Lewar Kair di di Kair Flyins and and Heidi Annol and Vidi Colin and Team Clean. Thank you for your provia and do and a pen draw. Chora your talent to go on. Sit down, ma. Salgwaith in a Gorfennol yma. Mae da gweld Rexham yn cael y cyfle yma. Datblygu newn nhw dros y tymor a nesaf. Tîm i fanc, tîm sydd y Megi Stichra ar ei gyrfa nhw. Ac unwaith eto fel Wilson i'n y gêm rygbi cymysg ran gallu'n gynharach. Da gweld y ddau dîm yn cymysgu er mwyn dathlu rygbi ar y dîd yma i gynnwys pawb yn y gêm dyn i gyd yn ei garu. Ian Sikiroz, a brav gweld y ddau dîm gyda'i gilydd. O dan y pys dyma yn stadiwm y Principality yn dathlu rygbi yma yng Nghartref Rygbi Cymru. A llewod cair dydd yn fuddigol yn y bôn. 5-19 yn erbyn Rhinos Wrexham. What a feast of rygbi we've had once again today in the road to Principality Series. Sponsored by Go.com compare and a feast of game but the final score Cardiff Lions victorious and they are the kings of Cardiff tonight 59-17 come back tomorrow for more from the road to Principality thank you very much for joining us